Hey there, we're live. <laughs> we're live again, y'all. Weren't we live last night? That yeah. was the last. Yeah, night. that. Yeah, we just finished a challenge. So <laughs> if you if you uh, want to get in on the next one, the, you can get on the waiting list down in the description. But you know something, sweetheart? I was just thinking that you know our move to Lisbon, Portugal, is mm. part of our retirement plan, part of our five plan. Oh yeah. You know. I agree totally. Yeah. And, it, you know, after dealing with my dad's health issues, it was so crystal clear to me that had we not moved from the United States and we stayed and something would have happened to either one of us, we would have ended up in poverty. All oh, this work and we would have ended up in poverty. Easily. That's without being said. It, it's just cost too much money. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Just to survive. It, it's. So we're on a mission. We're on a mission. Yes, we are on a mission to convince every same black person we know in the United States. Oh, yeah. It's time for the mass exodus to begin. And right. Yes. So let us introduce ourselves. Hey, y'all. My name is Halisi. And I'm Rick. Welcome to our Black Utopia. On our channel, we talk about money, travel and retiring abroad as we build generational wealth. So who is our special guest today, sweetheart? We have Tia Nikki in the house from Merida, Mexico. Yes, that was on our list. Yes. That was on our list. Yeah, our first move abroad list, top of the list was Merida, Mexico. Uh, but first, if you are new to our channel, let me just tell you, Rick and I about six years ago got a wake up call. We were getting close to retirement age and our savings looked crazy. Uh, so I was waiting for that. See, now I'm waiting for it. Crazy! <laughs> oh, but go. three years ago, we got our financial act together and we went from negative 22000 to over 800000 in net worth. So if moving abroad, travel money, if any of that sounds interesting to you, please hit the like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you know every time we go live or drop a new video. Yes, yes. So without further ado, um, I think we're going to introduce our, our guest here. She is scooting back to the chair. So here we go. <laughs> hey there. How hey, are Nikki. you? How you doing? How, how you doing, Rick? Hi, <laughs> <Hi>, everybody. <laughs> so we are going to let you introduce yourself and tell us a bit about what brought you to Merida. My name is Nichelle Hickman, Nikki, or better known as Tia Nikki. I'm a subscriber of Cortez Move Abroad and Thrive's uh, channel actually gave me that name. So thanks, Tony. And <laughs> I am here because I, um, I had it. <laughs> I was just done. I was just done with the U.S. And um, on my channel, I talk a lot about this gravitational force that pulls you into Merida. So I ended up aligning with that just through research. Um, I started in looking throughout the country, you know, East, and I've lived all over the country. So um, got to New Mexico and that looked pretty good. And somehow Mexico stuff started coming up in YouTube, you know, that algorithm is strong, right? Oh, yes. so, oh, so it pulled me in and it started showing me things from Mexico, you know, all over Mexico City. And I saw Merida and I'm like, what's Merida? What is a Merida? That's what we Same said. Same thing too. we said. Yeah. Yep. You know, and why is this, what is, where is it? And that started this deep dive, you know, into research land, um, where I found a plethora of information I had no idea even existed. And down the rabbit hole I went, and out of the airport I came. <laughs> <laughs> right here, right here. And probably one of the better decisions, I would even say best decision I've made in my life thus far. Absolutely wonderful. Well, I want to take us all the way back to what preceded the move and the ups and downs that you went through dealing with corporate America, dealing with the uh, economic system in America. But before we get to that, let's say hello to some of the folks who are in the chat. As always, Auntie Trey, hello there. Buenoita. Buenoita. From the ATL. Hola, the Howard View, the Howard World View. Hola. Good to see you. Now, this looks like 
pent up wanderlust. No, we've seen that before. Hello, I couldn't wait to watch this. Yay, good there. Good, good, good. Hello, Tanisia. Good to see you. Trey, good to see you. And our lovely Action VJ, always Action telling VJ. people to hit the like button. <laughs> Thank you for that. We so appreciate it. We really do. Valerina, good to see you. Hey, Valerina. Oh, it's gloomy there, huh? It was kind of gloomy here, but we still went out and took a lovely walk down to Oh, my God. Right down. Really we found new places with views. Oh, yeah. We we went down to Grasa and then Alfama and just you know getting some exercise because it's easy just to stay in your house, right? Yeah. Tell me, from poverty to paradise. That's right, Wendy. We're gonna talk about it. We are going to talk about it. Um, LPP, good to see you. Lucille Johnson, Kenya J, good to see you. Uh, Chris Anders, that looks like a new name. Welcome. Welcome. If you're not new, I'm sorry, but it looks like a new name. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Shauna, good to see you. Vanessa Ruiz, Travel Artistry by VR. Yay, thank you for showing up, Barbara. And one of my favorite names. Ain't nobody, Ain't nobody come, come to, to see, see you, you Otis. Otis. <laughs> <laughs> Pamela Jones, good to see you. Uh-oh. Midlife Money Moves, Greta in the house. Midlife Money Moves. Yes, yes, yes. I love it. I love it, love it. If you don't know why we're so excited, Greta did our challenge and we were talking about side hustles on Friday and brainstorming and all of this stuff. And I think she is on to something. Yes. So when she launches, we're going to let you know. We're going to have Greta back on the show because she's been on it before. Lisa Watts. Hello. Lisa, how you doing, dear? Good to see you. Good to see you. My stethoscope travels. Sounds like a traveling doctor. Sounds like it. Yeah. Welcome. I haven't seen that name before. Hello, Yolanda. Good to see you. And Monica Adelina, Glass Half Full, Arnell Watson, Pam Tucker from Minnesota. We love it. Killer Queen. Hey there. BP, uh, Evelyn from Alabama. I love it. Good to see you. And Agami, good to see you. Good to see you. Stacy, Deborah, welcome everybody. Welcome, 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 friends, new friends and family. We are all family here. So let's get right to it. I see you out there, Hyattsville, Maryland. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, so Tia is from the DMV. We've been talking about that. And I'm still convinced that Black folks came up with that name. Absolutely. I'm still convinced, just like the ATL. Um, Katrina, Lisa Clark, good to see all of you guys. So tell us what your life was like. You know, you you are uh, you were an executive in corporate America, and right, and then tell us what happened. Um, because it sounded like you was you was like the Jefferson straight balling. Oh, without question, without question, <laughs> without question. I ended up moving. Um, to Maryland from the uh, from Los Angeles, so I lived in LA for about eight years or so, and I moved to the DMV. Uh, my father I lived there at the time, and things just started moving. I started working, making good money, ended up in corporate America, um, and settled in for many, many, many years. Started at the bottom, climbed to the top. I'm sure a lot of people watching got that same story. Yeah. And uh, yeah, receptionist to executive, you know, um, and um, doing very well there. And ended up after about 15 years, I said, you know, it looks like I'm going to retire from here. So I want to move somewhere that's less of, you know, expensive, maybe buy a house because yeah. the houses in the DMV are a bit expensive, expensive. right? Yes. And it's just my mother and I. So I don't have like siblings um, like from her or anything like that. So I decided let's look down south because that's where she's from, Tennessee area. So let's look. And I came up on Charlotte. I was looking at Florida. Mm -mm. Mm. Charlotte. Mm -hmm. So Charlotte called my name and I said, you know, hey, let's go to Charlotte. So we packed up. I was making very, we're talking 100K, you know, a year with all the benefits and the sparkles and the stocks and all of that, right? 401K. Ooh, and the greens, honey, what? <laughs> pack it up, pack up, mama. We out of here. She was actually staying in a um, 
senior apartment complex. So I moved her and myself. Went down there in January, got noticed that we were getting laid off in April, and that July was the last month of employment, July 1st. So I'm like, okay, so my supervisor didn't know that before I left six months ago. Right. Yeah. Right. But it's okay. I said, okay. So I fought for a minute with trying to find another position in the company. Um, wrote a couple of emails, reached out to some people who I thought maybe would be able to support my, my plight. And I got crickets. Nothing. And it was at that moment I knew it was time to let it go. Even though it had been like 17 years, I'm like, it's time. It's time for a change. I'm in a new city, in a new state, wipe it slate clean, and let's start again. And so we decided to do that. And I said, I'm leaving with a severance package. So I paid off my car, you know, big purchases, got those bills out of the way, paid rent for a couple of months, utilities, which took a large amount of that severance package. And um, and I think there began the downward spiral. I just didn't see it, you know, mm -hmm. as the money started to leave. And it was um, it was less expensive there, so I was able to ride it out for quite a while. Right. You right. know, uh, but eventually, over a year or, or a little bit over a year, I said, you know, I got to go back to work. I got to go back to work. And um, so. I said, I also want to start a business. Maybe this is my opportunity to do, give back. You know, mm -hmm. I have that giving spirit. So I started a um, small catering business. Um, I had went through a lot in Maryland as far as my health challenges. So I ended up losing a lot of weight and was doing the vegan thing and wanted to share that with people and maybe healthy soul food, you know. And that's mm -hmm. good, except it's not good in the South. <laughs> they like, oh, that don't even sound right. I don't know like that. Is it grease involved? Did <laughs> of cheese in it? So right. that was like, you know, grand opening, grand closing, right? And I started working for Amazon for a while. And for a while, and then I came up with another business selling natural products before it was popular. <laughs> um, so that really picked up. People really liked that. And it just, it was too much for me to work at Amazon, which wasn't been paying me a lot. It was part-time. Back then they were paying like 10 bucks an hour. And I was used to big money, right? So I'm like, whatever. Let me, I can make more money hustling. So I got my hustle on, went out there physically on corners, sold my stuff, made flyers, really got into the business. And then winter hit and it shut me down. And that was the next two or three hardest months of my life because there was no income. Mm -hmm. And we were surviving off of mom's social security, which was money, but it was not enough. And it really right. never is enough, right, in the States. So I talked to a few people. I have a very, very, very good friend in Charlotte to help me out a lot. Um, shout out, you know who you are. Um, and help me kind of find my way, you know, God will send you an angel, the universe will send you an angel, your ancestors will send you an angel, wherever you are in your journey, if you trust, it will come. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. It will come. That's right. And it, and it came and it helped me in about three year mark. I was ready. I was ready to go back. I said, we got to do something. But right in five years is when I said, you know, we got to go back to Maryland because at least I can get a job there <laughs> right. and I can make some money there. Right. And my resume is tight. So let's go back. And so we didn't have anywhere to go. Where are we going? You know, and so I reached out to my friend in Charlotte and he said, I'll get you back there. And I'll get you. I said, where to stay? We'll get you a hotel. Get your hotel. So I said, okay. So we packed it up, put my car back on the thing, moved back to Maryland. Went back there. We were staying at Extended Stay Suites in a little room, me and my mother and I. I was sleeping in the closet. I gave her the bed. I had a little blow-up mattress, so I stuck it in the closet, shut the curtain, give me a little bit of solitude and privacy on my phone late at night looking for jobs, you know. 
Right. I signed up with an old temp service and I was able to get, you know, a little bit of money from there, at least to pay the mm. hotel expenses. He carried us for a very long time um, until I could find something. Um, but what I made was not enough to move anywhere. You know, we right. were just in a hotel. $1,400 a month for that little room and extended stay. Yep. Mm. Yep. Yeah. And yep. so um, we got food stamps, so that helped. Um, and then, you know, the little kitchenette or whatever. So I was able to take my food. Bad tags, y'all. I was rolling on bad tags. I'm going to tell the truth. I'm I sorry. What, what's bad tags? On oh, my car. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey. I had Charlotte tags. Yeah, so yeah. I was going through the cuts and you know, y'all know Marilyn my man, through the back just to get to work. Right, yeah. right. Right? Mm -hmm. To make the money to get right. the tags, right? right? Yeah. So and I was, I don't know how I made it, but I made it through that. And then um I talked to my mom and I said, you know, I think it'd be better if we try to rent a room somewhere. You know, like maybe even separate rooms at less amount than this fourteen hundred dollars. So, you know, we might be able to find something, five hundred dollars or so. And so um, she actually ran into a gentleman that offered to help her, and he scammed her. Took a card, took a money out the bank, her a bank card, gave her a room in a very bad uh, location. Um, oh no! The, yeah, and I had to get her out of that situation, but then she had nowhere to go. Um, a family member set me up with a friend of theirs that had a, a house with a room for rent. So for 300 bucks, it was a little teeny tiny room. And so I got that, but my mom couldn't stay there because it's like four dogs, her, her kids. She couldn't even fit in the room that I was in. Right. So we ended up going to crisis and they sent her to the uh, women's shelter. And so she stayed there. We were in that situation maybe about three months. And I just hustled and hustled and worked and saved money. And worked. and at that time, I had switched over to doing digital marketing. Um, so I was cultivating my craft and taking classes and doing freelance and looking for jobs. And she's working with her counselor at the center to try to find us, you know, some some um, somewhere to live. Right. And uh, and then one day, um, her counsel came in and said, we got a place for you. It's a two bedroom and um, it's ready and you can move in. And we did um, without income. I just, once again, the universe leaning into God, I, whoever you look to for your help, that's what I moved into. And once again, bam, delivered. We were there. Um, I know who I know to help what make happen happens, right? Because it's not about what you know all the time. It's about who you know. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. And getting the job working for Montgomery County Department of Transportation, government mm -hmm. job doing um, digital marketing, which was something that I taught myself. There you go. You know, and I went online <laughs> and got certified Google certification, which is free. Guys, yeah. you can take courses for free. Yes, yes, you, yes, yes. Right? Right? And they give you a certification and it looks beautiful sitting on your resume. Yep. And so I did that. I um, I took advantage of every free, everything I could find. I was even doing um, survey marketing. They do that. They'll pay you online mm -hmm. to take surveys and stuff like that. Yep. Anywhere I could get the cash. So once we got there, we were good. But in between that, um, she was at the shelter. I can only see her from a certain time of day. Um, where I was living, the lady didn't pay the um, electricity, electricity, so the it got turned off, y'all. The lights got oh. turned off in July. In oh. July. <laughs> oh, hot and muggy. It was rough. And so thus no hot water. So I couldn't bathe. And finally did eight days later. And I promised myself I would never, ever. If it was anything I could do to prevent that from happening to me again, I would. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? Because yeah. even after the government jo job, it was still drama. I'm there. I'm working. I'm doing the job. And the, the union approaches me. They want me to be a part of it and sign this paper and this. And it's temporary, but you'll be permanent. But yet again, they hired somebody else. And they interviewed him while I was sitting at work. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. 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 While I'm sitting there, and I was like, this, to me, it's beyond um, just what I see. It's a deeper root thing going on with yes. America as a whole. Yes. It's just a dog eat dog, and I got to step on this person to get where I'm going. And it's just the way the whole culture and the society is, it is, the being of it, the, the whole crux of it. Yeah. And uh, that was my motivation for leaving too, which eventually led led me to actually making the leap of faith and moving out of the states because it ain't gonna change. No. And I'm not no younger, you know what I mean? Yep. And so um, after that, back to the struggle, you know what I mean? Trying to get work, trying to find, you know. And thankfully enough, I was able to do some side hustles, cultivate my business, work with a partner to get an income, and uh, and that helped me, propel me to where I am now. I took advantage of all of that, saved all of that money to change my mother, our lives, so she don't have to be in no shelter again. And I'm thinking if they treat her like that now, how are they going to treat me when I get that age? Right. It's That's always right. a threat of no Social Security when we get older and all of this stuff, you know. Yep. And they keep you under threat, and it's always, you know, you have to be dependent. It's it's just so much with the U.S. So um, we looked at living out of the country for many years. And my mom has traveled um, extensively out of the country. She's been to Paris and Switzerland and things like that. So she was ready. She was packed before I could even probably make it. Good. That's one thing I say. My mom, she's ready to go. Anytime, Which? Ready to go. Which is unusual for her age generation, yeah, right? To have been, right? You know, there are not a lot of folks, you know, um, she's, so she's younger than I thought. Well, about the same, about around the age. Yeah, closer to my mom's age, mm -hmm. um, give or take. And my mom ain't been nowhere. Mm. She never had a passport. Mm. And her father worked for the airlines. And back in the day when the airlines, it was like American, went everywhere, right? Why? I, I can't remember which airline he worked for, but yeah, it got free, you know. And so he worked there for 25 years, 30 years. We all could have been flying for free. Ain't nobody went nowhere besides New York. Losing right, that. right. <laughs> Going to Disneyland. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. Exactly. right. So it is amazing uh, that your mom is so well traveled, and it, yeah. you know she was already uh, she is. Uh, a Renaissance woman. Absolutely. Right? And then we've lived so many places in the states. You know, we've always everybody said you come from a military family, but my mom was just um, she's always been like that my whole life. Mm -hmm. I started. I was on a plane by myself at like five or six years old, and yeah. so. Uh, and then we've always been spread out as far as family members. We have a very small family. But like my aunt, she's in California still right now to this day. Um, so, yeah, it's I think the way my family is, you know, like my grandmother's from Texas, was from, from Texas. So we've traveled and lived in Texas, L.A. and all these different places. And the one thing that we both came to a consensus on is it don't matter. It don't matter if you're on this no. side of the state or that side of the state. You know, it's just different uh, intensities, you know, like it intensifies, I think, the closer east you go. Right. And the weather. Yep, and the weather, right? And the Other west is relax. But they still, everybody's still dealing with the same issues of the right. same uh, patriarchal system. That's right. That's right. And racist system. Absolutely. And violence. Um, and, I know. I, you know, there have been so many shootings just since we have been here. And even the one month that we were back in the States or, or six weeks, I mean, it was just, it, it's, it's too much. It is too much. Yeah. And, you know, and between that 
and mm-hmm. the constant consumerism to get you to buy, buy, spend, 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 keep Media up with the Joneses, mama. right? Yeah. It, it's it's nonstop, and no one ever stops to say, um, you should. Be, they say you should be saving for this, and then thirty seconds later, but you need this in order to look good, and you need that in order to impress the per- people at your job, right? Exactly, and all that. And nonsense. don't forget to take this pill while you do it. See, right? Because <laughs> <laughs> you're probably crazy. Because you're probably crazy. Wrong with you, and we got the answer right here for you to manage it, not cure it. Just to manage, manage it. it. Right. We're going to give you these little pills and you take, but it's going to be some side effects for that pill. So we need to give you this other pill to kind of act them side effects. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh my gosh. You hit the nail on the head. Mm-hmm. So you're mm-hmm. scrolling around uh, YouTube mm-hmm. and thinking, you know, this is not the answer. This is <laughs> not the move. You know, the union should be, you know, on our side and providing good opportunities. And it sounds like that was a little whack. No, oh, no, crazy. no surprise. I, you know, I'm not anti-union at all. I'm definitely no, pro-union no. as a concept. But in practice, the way it is practiced in the United States, there is a lot of room for improvement. I will just put it Absolutely. that way as someone who, who votes on the blue side. So, um, you are scrolling around and you find Cartez, who was on our show. Y'all, if you want to see our interview with Cartez, it, you know, we'll actually put it in the description. It's not there now, but if you're watching from the replay, hey, say hello. And, hey, look in the, <laughs> and we will put it in the description after this live. Mr. Ross. Yes. Yes, That's yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, he, he is, he is dynamite. And mm-hmm. um, even after we decided Merida wasn't the place. We continued to follow him because it's interesting and we just want to help people move out of the United States. And we want you to move where you want to move, not where we moved. (laughs) I want everybody to move. Right? I mean, Portugal is great for us, but that doesn't mean it's going to be great for everybody. And everybody's got different situations and things like that. Absolutely. So, So you ran across Cartes. I did. I ran across Wandering Soup, Come. Con leche, con uh, ca- cafe con cafe leche. Cafe con leche. I remember them. them. So I went through a few before I got to move abroad and thrive. And I got to okay. move abroad. And I was like, okay, wait a minute. See, my man, he out here in these marital streets. Everything else. There was, was some you could relate. It wasn't right. so fluff, fluff, fluffy. Yep. Exactly. Everything else I saw was kind of pretty and you know, like, you know, it was completely different energy. Right. Than, uh, than Cortez. So when I saw him, I was like, yeah, yeah, brother, yeah. And the more I looked at him, the more convincing he was. And um, the three things I learned from him, and I'm very grateful to have gained a friendship from our encounter. Um, um, transparency, honesty, and, um, and consistency, definitely. Um, and vulnerability. Yeah. And so that's what I got from him. He's completely honest. I mean, like, completely. Oh, <laughs> yes. So, sometimes it's like, it's, are you oversharing? <laughs> right. I'm like, really? Yeah, you, you don't, don't go there? there? <laughs> and, it, you know, I, I, I think you, there, you can almost not overshare. I mean, there's there's some things that, you know, some people will take and, and use it against you, right? So Mm-hmm. From that standpoint, yes. But when it comes to how you are feeling and what you have gone through, mm-hmm. there's somebody out there that needs to hear it. Absolutely. They need to hear, you know, that, you know, my mama was trading money for food stamps and stuff like that. Right. They need to hear that stuff. Like we all did not come from perfect circumstances. We all did not have no silver spoon in our mouth or whatever. And some of the folks on YouTube want to make it seem like it's all pretty. And it's not, it's not necessarily pretty. You know, as we were telling the folks in our challenge, you know, we never made six figures Mm -hmm. ever. We had six figure titles without the six figure paycheck. And it's a difference. They're definitely. Oh, Oh, they'll give you a title in a minute. They'll give you a title. Fast. 
right? Will, oh, will, yeah. that, will, will that shut you yeah. up? Yeah. <laughs> will, that, yeah. will that shut you And then add some more work on top of it. Absolutely. Oh, here she come. Hey, y'all, y'all got mamas out there and older people that need to talk about mama coming. Yeah. Is mama coming? Oh, mama yay. coming. Yes. <laughs> Great. Because I, I, so we followed your, the whole story. There she is. Hey, hey pretty there, lady. how are hey. you? <laughs> so from the moment that Cartez started introducing you and showing you all of those houses and this, this, that, and the other, and he's like, I'm going to pick her up from the airport, you know, wow. <laughs> you know, uh -huh. we follow like, it, you know, like it was a, a soap opera, we're like, <laughs> 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 What's gonna happen next? Is she gonna find her? Like, oh, no, what happened? I read it in the comments. They were like, do the next. What's happening? What's gonna happen? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So tell us about when you landed the first time when mom was still in the DMV, you landed and you okay, in, in that heat, and you're looking around at all of the pretty places that Cartez is showing you. And then tell us about the pricing as well. Okay, so the first thing I probably say is I was taken aback by the colors in the city. Like, I'm so used to bricks, you know, or, you know, <laughs> you know, the states, you know, I go yeah. here. So many, it's so beautiful and colorful and completely yeah. different than any. Because, guys, this is my first time out of the states for you all that haven't been anywhere. Mm -hmm. Don't feel like, oh, I've never been. I had neither. And I moved out of it. So <laughs> you can do it. So yeah. um, the places that we looked at were actually exceeded my expectations mm -hmm. i didn't really expect a lot and i think that's the point i didn't expect a lot <laughs> right. and it was a lot right mm -hmm. and then the prices just blew me away so right now we're in a four bedroom two level front yard backyard beautiful porch beautiful. Um, beautiful. two fruit trees a well a rooftop deck and we paid 625 a month um so and the place we looked at before this if you go back and look at cortez video when i look at the houses this house is on that video okay. and the one we looked at before that one was 600 and it was a two-bedroom but it had a jacuzzi a backyard and a washing machine but it was teeny tiny it was narrow, <laughs> comparatively speaking it was okay narrow. Okay. Um, so we, so Cortez and I talked about it and he was like, for $25 more, I should, you know, yeah. even on the video, he's like, if she don't get it, I'll get it. I'll get it. <laughs> I <Yeah. remember> that. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, this is a good deal. So I like where I am and guys that follow me know I have an issue with the sound is loud. Um, it's quiet because the day is Sunday, uh -huh. um, but we right on a bus route. So that the house shakes when the buses go by. So we will eventually um, have to move, but it's not because of the house. The house is beautiful. It's beautiful. And Absolutely. everything came with it. We didn't have to bring that one thing. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Sheets, that's all. It had all four bedrooms. It's completely furnished. Let me throw that in for 625. Mm -hmm. Completely furnished, mm -hmm. um, beautiful glass, dining room table, oh. living room furniture, everything down the pots, pans, silverware yeah. mm -hmm. like wow everything play everything yeah. like everything. everything yeah so we didn't so have to, had to come with your suitcases that's exactly what happened wow wow and it was good because the way we left so <laughs> we yeah. pretty much got out of the bed and went to the airport yeah so yeah we didn't i sold what i could sell and it was the end of my lease and i didn't want to renew a lease Right, and mm -hmm. I didn't want to pay because our rent was fifteen hundred dollars, so I didn't want to pay. Mm -hmm. That's like four months rent here. I'm not. So, in mm -hmm. order to you know avoid that, we were like, we got to get out of here. Yeah, yeah. we just we just got to go. Yeah. So, and the things that were in the house just weren't worth holding us back from uh, going. So, <laughs> I, I think the best part was giving most of our things back to the shelter that mom stayed uh -huh. in. That was very emotional. Uh -huh. Okay. And I gave them all the goodies. Yeah. Because they don't sell them. They give right. them away. Yeah. Right. Where Goodwill sells, sells them. Yeah. And that's cool exactly. for tax write off. I did that too. However, the good stuff, the real meat of things that the women need, mm -hmm. we gave to the shelter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Lovely, lovely. And so mom, what did you think when you walked into the house at the first at the first I time? Was 
I was astonished. She saw it on video. I saw it on video. <laughs> okay. When I got here, I said, Nikki, wow, <laughs> this place is tremendous. I mean, it had everything, the ceilings are high. I'm like, whoa, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Such a drastic difference. I mean, we oh. We went a little two bedroom <laughs> it was that in the senior community. That's where the, the, the um, shelter placed us. Uh -huh. Right, and right. So it was teeny tiny. Yeah. Teeny tiny. Yeah. 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 And a lot of the places in, in Europe are tiny in comparison. Mm -hmm. Mexico, on the other hand, is more like the United States because it's newer, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. than over here. Yeah. But um, but yeah, these the mansions. I've never seen. I've seen oh, God. places these big. big yeah. um, and you know, uh, Merida is known as the city of walls because everybody has. There, you don't have to worry about parking on the street because everybody has a a garage or a okay. park. Uh -huh. Everybody, right. the house right. could be this big, yeah, and, and this space have, have uh -huh. enough for park. They do not play uh -huh. when it comes to parking mm -hmm. and that's one thing that I appreciate especially in DC where there's like none such <laughs> none yes, right yeah so it's like everybody's got a compound uh -huh. if they've got exactly. the walls up right uh -huh. exactly uh -huh. everybody's got a compound I yeah, I've never seen anything made like that you know with the uh privacy walls uh -huh. and um and not sharing the wall that you have your own wall uh -huh. and the other person has their, their wall. Uh -huh. right? right. Uh -huh. So that's very common here mm -hmm. or space, significant space in between. So, yeah. Okay. We, we do have some questions. I'm going to get to them y'all. I'm going to oh. we'll scroll back, <laughs> but before I do that, um, so how's the Spanish going? <laughs> the I, Spanish. I, I took Spanish for, uh, in high school. Okay. And I every every word. I look for words. I can't find them. They're not there. Oh. They're not there. You, if you, if they say you use it or you lose it. Lose it. That I lost it. <laughs> yep. Right. We're doing so, Spanish classes though. My on my channel, that I was trying mm -hmm. to put together. I am still in effort of putting together um, the Spanish class, online Spanish class. So okay. it's still coming. It's just been so much that's happened. And then the young lady had family issues. We were right at it. And uh -huh. she said, I got to go to New York, to Mexico City. Yeah. So um, I always tell people, do you need to know Spanish? And Cortez says this too. Do you need to know Spanish to move to Mexico? Uh -huh. No. Do you need to learn Spanish yes. to live and thrive in Mexico? Definitely. Yes. <laughs> it's to your advantage uh -huh. to know it. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. Don't let not knowing the language hold you back. Right. But um, don't think you're gonna be. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. We, we, we're not, we are not uh, colonizers. We do just you know we we re we recognize that we are guests in in other folks' country. Exactly. Um, never just, plus, you know, this is what I always tell Rick. You know, because I'm learning Spanish and Portuguese now. Oh wow. And, um, yeah, well, I thought we were moving to Mexico or Spain. Costa Rica or Spain. Yeah. So I started learning Spanish and continued. Wow. And then when he came up with Portugal, I was like, but I'm taking <laughs> Spanish. And Lord, Portugal is not easy. <laughs> oh, it just, imagine. some things just, it's like, well, it's, it's, it's spelled a certain way. But uh -huh. when you say it, it's totally opposite. And it says, oh. that makes no sense. No, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't. But what I realized mm -hmm. is that Spanish oh. and Portuguese are so close that um, when I was, I would get on Google Earth because I was just dreaming. We got to go. We got to go. We got to go. You know, and every time I get depressed, I get on Google Earth and start walking around Portugal wow. on Google Earth. Right. And I look at the signs and I'm like, I can read the you signs. You understand them. I can read the billboards. Yeah. So it is close enough to Spanish that I can read it for the most part, especially in context. Right. But but uh, but listening to it, I'm starting to get it now because we've had five whole lessons. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm starting to pick up the what I was reading and understanding. Now I'm starting to hear it and saying, oh, that's how they pronounce that. <laughs> but, you know, it, uh, but yeah, Spanish, y'all, is so yeah. easy in comparison. Oh, I can understand. I may not be able to speak a lot, but I can understand. Yeah. I can have. A, I can listen to somebody and know what they're telling me. 
I can that's great. Yeah. That's yeah, great. That okay. seems to be really like easier to do. And the other thing that I appreciate, especially because you know what I had to deal with with my dad getting dementia and this and that. And when I was talking to his doctor earlier on about what can either prevent or stave off it getting worse as fast. Mm -hmm. And he said, have him start uh, learning another language. And so he was doing that for a while and then um, when I was working too much and not keeping on him doing Duolingo and stuff. Mm -hmm. Duolingo. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it just, it just yeah. went down by the wayside. But it's like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to learn a language because I don't want to get there. Yeah. I, I rebuke that stuff. Preventative. That's right. Preventative care. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So part of learning two languages at the same time, because I could drop Spanish, but I've come so far. Wow. I've been, you know, I want to, I want to know it. I well, you visited it. now. You got to go all the way, right? <laughs> exactly. It's been almost three years taking Spanish. Oh, yeah. Wow. yeah, yeah. So I, I want to. I want. I said five languages before I leave this earth. So all right. Wow. Yeah. Just I'll, I'll settle. Know. I'll settle for one, and I'm still learning <laughs> English. Yeah, English right. is English will be my second language. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a question from Greta here. Uh, were you and your mom able to get permanent residency in Mexico? We are in the process of doing that. Yeah. So the way it works here is you get an a immigration lawyer, which we have. Um, I suggest shopping around because you yeah. get different prices sometimes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so we are in the process of doing that now. And I'm on my channel. I'll talk about it once it's completed. Exactly what I have to do because I have done it backwards. <laughs> well, you know... I picked up that from Cartes. Too. I well, you know, when when it's when it's time to go, it's time to go. And the thing about yeah, Mexico yeah. is, yeah. it is because it's so close to the states. It's a lot easier just to fly back to get the mm -hmm. process started. You exactly. don't want to. You don't want to come across the ocean. Mm -mm. Right. You don't have to go, especially if you don't live it on the east coast. If you uh -huh. live in the center on back, that's a long, expensive flight. It is. So you don't want to do that coming over here. But, you know, um, plus Mexico gives us six months. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Right. The, and then you can also season. get um, an extension on your six months. Yeah. The, the day after it expires, you file for an extension, you will give you another six months. So, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, you can file for extension. I mean, like, six months isn't guaranteed, but typically. Right, um, right. When you file for, and while you, if, once you start your process here, so I'm getting to, under, you know, so many things have come into play with this new program we talked about with people who have traveled at least two to three times since 2020. They have this program, I think it ends at the end of the year, where you get your temporary residency based off your travel experience. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, oh. Yeah, unfortunately, we don't have that. However, they do have other programs that we may qualify like under the family act and things like that uh -huh. so that's what i'm working with the attorney now on seeing if we do not have to leave to do it because yeah. they have a permanent residency program now it's costly it'll cost you a couple pennies um but you won't have to leave and i'm talking to this chick um uh, avila she's in where is she in port of Island? no no uh -uh. play that carmen Playa del Carmen, uh -huh. and she has a, so. a business there. Yeah, and uh -huh. so she helps people, um, but she would that would be under permanent. You know what I mean? Right. Right. That's what we want. Yeah. So whoever <laughs> asked the question, <laughs> that is what we are seeking. Per, I don't. We don't want temporary. Uh -uh. Nothing. Uh -uh. Permanent, no and temporary. we don't have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. And then also, too, for viewers knowing that it does not affect for my older viewers, my mom. Yep. Um, Social Security. Yep. Having your permanent residency does not affect you getting your Social Security. You can actually no. get it deposited yep. in a bank here in Mexico. Here. Uh -huh. So don't believe the hype. Yeah. Um, however, citizenship is a different thing. And it's right. Right. now citizenship, if you defect, you ain't getting nothing. <laughs> so there's a difference between residency and citizenship. Residency, you keep your dollars. Um, the disability, you will not get, though, FYI. You just get oh. Oh, interesting. So yeah. if you leave the states, you no longer qualify for disability? No, no because the state pays you disability. Oh, and not the, 
Not the feds. Security, right. Right. Not the feds. Okay. I did my research. Yeah. Yeah. That's good to know. That's very valuable information. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then go on SSA, look it up as well. So Mm -hmm. you can see for yourself, you know, and verify this information. But I had to look that up for mom because she gets both. (laughs) So when the residency kicks in, that'll stop. stop. Mm-hmm. However, Social Security is getting a raise in January. Go on. And look at your yes. <laughs> yes. We looked yeah, at I it and, and it was coming. Yes. Uh-huh. It was pretty juicy. Uh-huh. It was pretty yeah. juicy. So. I was like, what's going on here? Right? Uh-huh. Yes. Yes. I said, you know, oddly, because I handle my parents' finances. So it mm-hmm. seems it seems like they already got a raise. Oh, they did. Yeah. Now, Rick didn't. But um, but my my mom and dad, it went up like I want to say in October, and I'm like, what's all this extra money? And wow. and I left it in there because you know they make mistakes. Yeah, right, uh-huh. right. Exactly. And I didn't want them going back in and grabbing it out, and then something go bounce, 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 and all that nonsense. So exactly. I just kind of left it in there. Now it's been a minute. Mm-hmm. The money's gone. <laughs> they spent it, <laughs> right? Or I spent it on their bills, right? And right. so, at least um, you spent it though. So I think maybe I don't know if they're rolling it out. Maybe people who've been on it for a long, long time, you know, because uh-huh. they're in their eighties. Uh-huh. I don't know. I don't yeah, know. Maybe. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. So if they haven't gotten it. It's coming. It's coming. Yeah. 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 Um, so midlife money moves. Greta King asks, "How's the transportation in Merida?" So I'm yeah, public transportation. I'm assuming that's what she's talking about. Okay. Well, you talked about the buses going by your house, so we know that yeah. they got buses. And the, and the buses are cool. I, I definitely recommend learning the bus system. Yeah. It's only forty pesos to ride, which is two bucks. So is that right? A twenty cents. Yeah. Twenty cents. No. Tw- yeah. Twenty five. Yeah, I yeah, have a problem cents. with Wait, the decimal uh, point. Twenty cents. Forty yeah. pesos. I think that's twenty. Twenty cents. cents. That's no, I think it's, no, I think a hundred pesos is five dollars, right? Uh, yeah. We're, we're okay. A <laughs> hundred pesos is five dollars. So That's forty pesos that. must be two dollars. Two dollars. Yeah, because fifty pesos would be two fifty. Oh, okay. Okay. So that's kind of expensive because when because in it's twenty five. It's okay. It's just twenty. It's just, yeah, so okay. I've got to move the move decimal. Move the decimal, yeah. Move I have yeah. a problem where it. it's yeah. nothing here. Believe me, the bus is not two dollars; it's twenty cents. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So learning the system is good, um, and it'll take you all over uh, Merida. Merida. Um, but you got to know where to get off. You got to know Spanish. Yeah, I highly suggest yeah. that. So <laughs> I would say a week ago, I would be like, "Oh, it's beautiful. I have any problems?" But last week, they got. Uh huh. Sure so we ride Uber a lot, and Cartez did a video about this too, about getting out of here and taking your stuff when you get oh. out. I don't know what's wrong with me, y'all. That day, I, I, the man is sitting right by the ATM. I told him I'll be back. It shows a round trip ticket from my house, a round trip from my house to the bank back to my house. He left me, and he took my groceries when he left me, because I went to the grocery store. So I did grocery store bank. To my house. He picked me up from the grocery store, took me to the bank, rolled out. Uh-huh. I'm at the ATM with my card in the ATM. So uh-huh. I'm like, uh-huh. him and the groceries are my money. I, I don't need to answer that, right? <laughs> so he left. Well, thank God you didn't leave your bag in the car. That's yeah. what I said. What in my phone, my keys, uh-huh. or something like that? So I was on panic mode because <laughs> I didn't know where I was. And, um, I'm thankful I had minutes on my phone, which is the next fiasco. <laughs> um, and I was able to get a ride back. So on Uber, you can contact them in customer service. They reimbursed me for the trip because he did not complete the whole trip. I called him about my bag. He didn't answer the phone. I submitted a ticket about my bag. They tried to reach him. Twenty After 24 hours, it's a wash. Don't even worry about it. I just went back to the store and got rebought what I had in there. However, it was a hard lesson to learn, mm-hmm. and yeah. Cortez just did a video about yeah. it. I feel so full. I was more upset with myself because I know better than I was with him. You know what I mean? Because God bless him. Maybe he needed the turkey. Yeah. You know, maybe he needed the bread. I don't know. It was donuts. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I mean, I can give more. You know what I'm saying? Thank God I can go and get more. You know what I mean? Yeah. So truly, I truly, gave one star, though. I gave him one star. The karma, nobody can hide from karma. That's why I said he'll get it back uh -uh. and he didn't get paid for that trip. <laughs> so it hit his pocket first. Yeah, uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? So it's all good. Um, so then last night, uh -huh. Mama and I were supposed to go to a party. <laughs> And we went, but they took drug us, dropped us off at the wrong address. And so we got out, and I'm like, this is wrong. He's gone. I go on my phone. I don't have no minutes. Oh, no. So I can't call an Uber. I can't do WhatsApp because that's what we use here to communicate. <laughs> WhatsApp is free. Uh, they say I'm supposed to be able to use it free with no minutes. Did not work, y'all. So me no, not me, unless you have Wi-Fi. Right. Me and Mama put on a Tied up a shoelace. Yeah, we went to walk. We got to walk. Yeah. And we walked a couple of miles. Yep. And we ended up at OXO, which is a place where you can recharge your phone, put uh -huh. more money on money on your phone. I left yeah. her at the bus stop, yep. walked down, called them, they came and got us. Uh -huh. We did not go to the party. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. But after like two, you know, hour and a half we, out no, there, it was nighttime yeah. too. Uh -huh. It was late at night. Yep. We just came back home. You know. Yes. Okay, so two women walking by themselves. I was going to say you're going to need to ask. Yeah, I could have been one in the morning. No and problem. It, it would be no problem. And so for the people watching, just so you know, I know you. If you don't know, Merida is the second safest city in North America. Um, mm -hmm. Canada, the U.S., and Mexico is the safest. And so there be there's kids out playing. Yeah, everybody night. was speaking. Hello. Yes, they walk by night. No, just you know. Right. Yeah, they, everybody's out at night because it's hot in the day uh -huh. here. Um, and so it's completely safe to walk at midnight, one in the yeah, morning. I can walk to. by myself at three o'clock in the morning, and nothing so, will happen to me. Uh -huh. So you weren't worried about running into a cartel member or anything? Oh no, cartels came and got me. <laughs> <laughs> they missed me. <laughs> no you know, point. that's the no. question that we always got asked. I even oh, got wow. asked, I even got asked that question by an officer at the uh what was it? Customs. Customs officer. Oh, my really? A Hispanic Customs officer, Hispanic asked me, American, Hispanic American. Oh, oh, okay. Custom officer asked me that question when he looked at my uh, uh, visa, my visa, and he said, "Oh, you have a permanent residency in Mexico." And I said, "Yeah." And he said, "So, is it really safe? Do you really feel safe down there?" I said, "My man, I'm a black man from America. I feel very safe in Mexico. Exactly. I feel uh, safer in Mexico than I did in, in England. Not in the yeah. U.S. though. I bet you that. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, oh, I got you. I got you. So, yeah. you know, all that. And that's all they hear back in the United States. Yeah. That's, that's all they hear. All the crazy. Oh, you got to be careful. Flash. They're out there and they're going to do this and they're going to do that. It's like them people, they, they're more respectful. Uh -huh. Exactly. Yeah. They care yeah. about the residents. They that's their clients. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. So it's just like I tell them, it's just like like New York, you know, back in the day with the gangsters and stuff. They used to feed the community uh -huh. and open up the the things for the kids yep. to come play. Uh -huh. They didn't come in and destroy it. They not, might fight amongst themselves in the families yeah. fight, but not the people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Plus, they know they ain't getting no money from my family. That's for sure. <laughs> okay, hello, hello. So, <laughs> <laughs> Do I look like somebody got some money at home? Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, they might want to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. You better call Halisi. She's the one with the money. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she ain't got a checkbook with her. <laughs> got a checkbook. <laughs> I can write all the checks. <laughs> right. I'm not sure how good they are. No, uh, they're they going to bounce all over the country. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let's talk about the cell, like, um, because we had cell service in America. We still have our cell phone numbers, but we have like, kind of like a pay as you go plan now to keep our American numbers. Mm -hmm. And we just signed. Bum, 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 a two-year contract where it was like, it's a contract. And we, we, we locked in for two years. <laughs> but I think here, um, you only have to fulfill a third of a contract. Yeah, you're not okay. locked into two years. So we're not necessarily locked into the whole two years. Oh, that's good. Uh, which is good because I know it's going to go on sale. Mm -hmm. 
and I want to catch that sale price. I missed it by a day. We just missed it by a day. I was I was so hurt. But anyway, um, so you were talking about topping up minutes and stuff like that. So how much do you have to pay? Because when we were in the states, we were paying like two hundred and something. Oh, for sale service, you know, with the all you can eat data plan, and then all you know, all you can eat minutes. Yeah. It, it was expensive. It was out yeah. of control. It was Verizon, right? Yeah, they're the highest too. Yeah. Uh, oh, are they? Yeah. yeah. So when I was in corporate America, I worked for T-Mobile for two almost twenty years. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So how much are do you have to pay? You know, now to to get cell service in Mexico. So at, okay, so I'm like you. I still have my U.S. phone. Um, Cause it's tied to so many accounts and verification codes, but I did, oh, right? Yeah, so then um, I did change my data plan to like a page you like the lowest gig they have. So it was fifty dot forty seven dollars a month in the states, and so okay. I got it down to like fifteen bucks. Um, but they do a courtesy credit of thirty, so it's really supposed to be forty five. Hmm. But here my Y'all gonna be mad. My cell phone bill here is five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't hating. We ain't mad. But <laughs> it's five dollars yep. to recharge my phone. So last night, um, hundred pesos, right? So I went big last night and did hundred and fifty pesos. Because <laughs> I was scared after I got we got stranded. I was like, load them up. But one thing they don't have that I. But somebody says it exists, but I haven't seen it. Is an unlimited plan. Oh, yeah. Okay. I haven't seen so it's here. You don't pay monthly. Like you don't get a bill. As a foreigner, you don't get a bill. If you're a resident with a um, so what, what they call a social security number, it's called something right. else. A tax ID um, number. Tax right. Then you're a resident. Then you qualify to get on a plan uh -huh. and get a phone, just like the states. Mm -hmm. But since we're not residents, you have to, you know keep recharging mm -hmm. your phone. Right. So five dollars, I think the highest plan was two hundred pesos. So ten dollars. Yeah. 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 And it's good for about three weeks, three almost a month. A little bit okay. over three weeks. Okay. And you're supposed to get a thing on your phone to let you know you're running out of minutes. You, you're coming close. Right. So we we just signed a contract for forty eight dollars a month for two phones. Oh. Okay, that's, that's okay. Uh, unlimited, yeah. unlimited everything. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's yeah. Good. No. I'm so twenty about twenty five dollars a piece. Twenty five dollars a piece. Right. And um, because and and I didn't even want to pay that much because we're still paying Google Fi. So we our cell phones have two two SIMs. Right. So uh, we can take the SIM. I was going to do Google Fi too. Yeah. Yeah, to, and and then the you know the American numbers on one sim, and then we got our Portuguese number on the other sim, and mm -hmm. you know, and my and our Portuguese bank, something happened with their system, and they were not able to text me the verification code on the American phone number. Okay. So here, just to let you guys know, in <laughs> Portugal, they got these banks locked up oh like for not their verification codes and stuff is. On is chain. Yeah, it's on another it's level. Like, oh, oh my god. So they give you like this seven digit number. Oh. And then every time you log in, it says give us the third, the fifth, and the eighth number. Oh. Or the first, yeah, the second, and the never number. put in the whole number. You never put in the whole number. Really? You put, yeah. You put random numbers uh -huh. from the number. Yeah. yeah. It's it's serious. It's like, huh? <laughs> when he tried to explain <laughs> that to us, of course, uh -huh. and he was he was uh -huh. speaking Portuguese trying to explain it to us. Yeah. Oh, it's uh -huh. like, you what? <laughs> yeah. It's like, dude, that don't make no sense. <laughs> One of the and things you said don't make sense. <laughs> yeah, it's like, that don't make sense. Stop. You got to put in the whole code. He said, no, yes. no, 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 no. No, and so then he showed us, he logged in on, you know, on his bank computer and showed us. He says, now get your code out. He's asking for the second number, now the third oh. and the eighth number or whatever, you know. Yeah. It's, it it's random. Every single time it changes it which changes. numbers they ask for. So when mm -hmm. I needed to, I'm like, I'm not able to log in. I'm not able to do anything because I'm not getting a verification code. Um, they do have English speaking folks that you can call oh, as the cool. banks. 
Yes. 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 <laughs> because how do, I don't know the words for this stuff. I barely know it in Spanish. Right. I kind of don't know it in English. So, <laughs> so I called and, and talked to them and they said that they were having problems texting their American, their customers with American phone numbers. And, you know, I said, well, I have a permanent Portuguese number now. They wanted to know, like, you know, my, my son's blood type. Oh, yeah, I mean, the quite I'm, I'm, I'm question. exaggerating. I mean, I the questions they were asking, I was like, I don't, I don't, I don't remember that. I don't remember telling you anything about that. Right. Wow. Right. You want to know what? I mean, it took like 20 to 25 minutes going through stuff for them to say, okay, it's you. Oh, it's you. We're going we to go ahead and change this number for you. Yeah, wow. they're serious. It's they're serious. serious. But then on the other hand, everybody and their mama has our bank account number. So they just pay bank to bank here. Bank to bank. That's right? how it is. They don't really do cash app and stuff, right? No, they do cloud bank numbers here. Yeah. And so um, our landlord has our bank account number. We have his, yeah. et cetera, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I guess that's why they need to have all this extra security because everybody's walking around with your account number. Right, right. I'm, so, I'm glad to see it put in place. I know it's a hassle, but yeah. I like the security. You know? Yeah, I do too, because I, I feel like... Um, I'm not as, I don't have to be as cautious, like with my bank account number. Uh -huh. Right. Because uh -huh. they got that stuff on lockdown. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Uh -huh. So as long as they, I, I don't accidentally give somebody that code. <laughs> right. <laughs> I can just see me mouthing it out loud. Let's see, it's three. <laughs> and somebody watching. <laughs> exactly. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. God, it's written on the inside of my hand. Okay. Right. <laughs> Why so, exactly? All right, let me get to these questions. <laughs> uh, Tia, Nikki, and Mama, y'all open to adopting a middle aged adult. <laughs> <laughs> Come on down. I love it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. A middle aged daughter. Oh, wow. So, BP asked, Did you drive to Mexico? I did not. We did not. However, we did think about it. Yeah. Um, but I sold my car. Yeah. Um, before I left. Oh yeah, I let everything go. Everything. Um, yeah. yeah. I did not drive. Um, I do know people who have driven. Um, yeah. Yeah. some have had great experiences. Huh. Some have not. Yep. Um, through custom and come in and been stopped uh -huh. and had to give up some money. Money. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. and some people came here with no problem, have had people drive their furniture here, you know, mm -hmm. and do that. Yeah. So no, we didn't drive, we flew and we just got up out the bed. Yep. We left the bed sitting in the apartment, y'all. Um, we got up and we left. Yep. I, I wish I would have bought that spread though. That was a good spread. I, I know, I know. I should have brought our comforter. I know, I know. <laughs> no, I, I know it gets cold here. And uh, not cold, not DMV cold. Right. Um, but, you know, there's not the same kind of insulation and you don't have central heating. I've never no. since seen central air or heating outside the United States. To be no, we don't have it either. So um, Auntie Trey asks, uh, and any bug issues? Before we get to that, just... If you want, if y'all want to watch the interview that we did with Angela and Lamar back in June or July, something like that, they mm -hmm. drove. Oh. They drove they from drove. from DC. Oh, shut up! Yes, wow. to to Queretaro. Oh, what? Yes, we went on a journey for oh, real. Because yes. yes. most people come from like Texas, yeah. you know, kind of closer, well, yeah. in, you know. But wow. Yes. 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 Definitely. So Auntie Trey wants to know any bug issues in oh, yeah. our, I think oh. she means, are you near the ocean? Yes. Okay. So yes and yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's, Mexico. It's, Mexico. it's Mexico. It's Mexico. It's bugs. It's bugs. Yeah. They call the guy. So there are bug issues, but they're not like crawling down the walls or nothing. You know, like, <laughs> um, when we first came here, we had a few. They come up through the drains. So mm -hmm. um, most bathrooms have a cover over the sink uh -huh. and the tub. Y'all yeah. the shower because they don't have a lot of tubs uh -huh. here either. Y'all the tub is not a normal thing. 
No. Showers are what they do in Mexico. Yep. Although you can find a place with a tub if you need it. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they come up through that drainage system. So we have covers on all of them. Yeah. When we first came, we had some in the front. We were like, where are they coming from? <laughs> And yep. we discovered that we needed to push that stopper down. down. Right. And that stopped. And then I called, we called the um, exterminator. Yes, yes. And they came Definitely. out. And um, that was months ago. We yeah. have not seen not a one. Not one. Maybe That's one. Right. Dead. Dead. <laughs> Dead. Dead. He, he, he climbed through the through the poison and died on your arm. Right, right after yeah. you got up. And then the Do you remember a gecko? Oh, oh, yeah. oh yeah. <laughs> Like, I don't like gecko. Uh -oh. uh -oh. I don't I don't care about I call mama for the road. <laughs> mama and she come I got it. <laughs> yep. Sweet. I'm trying to reflection is too much on that. So um <laughs> the reflection. Um so the geckos are for real and the more um oh, greenery you have oh. or yeah that what yeah. that's what brings them. So because my house got on the outside we got like Stuff growing on the wall, ivy growing on the wall. Um, they live there yeah. and they come and they can't stay here. One guy in, and <laughs> <laughs> so you don't pay rent, sir. <laughs> right? <laughs> and I don't like to kill him, he didn't make it. <laughs> I did my best. I called Cortez, and I, said, yes, I called him and I said, Can you? I can't do this, it's old school. Can you please come and get the thing? And so he came over. Yeah. And he's scared of them too. So I was going to say, he's like, scared of them. It was did quite he, like, he he did did he, <laughs> well, yeah, he, he had out, his daughter come and take care of him. Where you want him? Where you want him? Where you want him? <laughs> <laughs> I said, outside, put him outside. Yeah. Where, far, far. I said, throw him in the yard and use him as an example. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I'm about to come in here. <laughs> and so far, they have it. I think it worked. And I don't know what. But during these seasons, it's not a lot. Um, you know, the co with the cold right, rainy, yeah. Yeah. Jesus, it's all of 85. So, this is <laughs> I think we're coming in the winter, it's yeah. going to be 85. 85. <laughs> and so, uh, <laughs> so, we don't get many. Um, now in the boat, as soon as it gets warm, uh oh, that's Here something we definitely have to get. Cortez, funny, he said he act like he don't see him when they get in the house. He just turned this way and looked. Because <laughs> <laughs> his daughter came over and helped us yeah. get the one out of our house. Mm -hmm. And they just, so she, she went in and saw one and just closed the door and came out. They don't, we don't even wrestle with them no more. Uh -uh. Um, uh -uh. I think it's one upstairs. I closed the door. I don't. Uh -huh. I don't so know. we got one when we were in Puerto Vallarta. And oh. and he 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 lived out on the balcony because we were in a oh. high rise. Oh. And every time we turn the light on out there, and then of course the light would attract the little bugs. And so yeah. here he yeah. come feasting, right? right. And that, that's all good. Stay there. But he don't bring his little behind inside yeah, the house. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> so uh -oh. Rick thought he got him out and he went to bed. And I was like, mm -mm. he ain't mm -mm. Up. He ain't now. I, I was about to call him the in, I was about to call the gecko the N word, but I, I, I that little that little man is still a little ninja. That little ninja got the gecko. So I get the broom out from the from the closet, and I'm just I'm up. I'm I'm working on YouTube stuff and answering comments and whatnot. Here he come. I said I knew it. I knew it. So I got that broom and I'm just, I opened the balcony and I'm just sweeping him towards it, sweeping him towards it. So then he starts jumping around. I was uh -oh. like, oh no, he didn't. He so we finger. had like this fan over here. He jumped oh on the fan goodness. and I was like, oh gosh. Then he runs in the fan. I'm like, okay, good. I took the whole fan and put it outside <laughs> and closed the door. Oh, I, I, got up, I got up next to you. I was wow. like, why is the fan outside? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Wow. I would definitely do the same thing. Yep. Right. I because I wasn't going to touch him. And now when I was younger, we in California we had lizards, basically the yeah. same, same, thing. Thing. same family, right? Yeah. Um, and I would pick them up by their tails and then the tail would fall off. Oh, yeah, it was getting away from you. 
Right? Yeah, that's that was one of their defense mechanisms. So then the tail's still wiggling around and he's Ooh. gone and it's like I I Ooh, yeah, yeah, story. Yeah, I don't know. It's scary. But it's the bigger ones. Yeah, when I know. You're walking up and down the street and you get those yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 Uh -huh. yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I look out the window and I see him going All through. In the and we and, have and, and do they do they give you the nod? Cause cause they were giving us they the nod. Give you nod. They go like that. I got you. What's up? <laughs> I, see you. I saw one looking in my window like I see you. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I told him, sir, that is your yard. I don't have nothing to do with Oh yeah. I'll just That's this is this street. is my space. That's your will. That's your space. My space. Uh -huh. You were there yep, before yep. me. Uh -huh. They were there before we were yep. here. Uh -huh. Exactly. So yeah. Exactly. So it Rosalind is. wants to know, how are you treated? Since Americans treat Mexican oh, immigrants so poorly, so badly, is there any resentment from Mexicans because of that? Y'all, the beauty and the love is real in it's Mexico. Real. It's real. It's real. These not American Mexicans. These is Mexico Mexican Mexicans. Mexicans. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's a difference. Yep. So on my channel, my last video, I talked about this specifically. Mm -hmm. um, the first night I was here on Cortez video, we talked about the man walking by in Central. And yep. he looked at me and said, hmm, Raina. And me immediately, what he called me? Because I'm fresh off the plane. Uh -huh, you know? Yeah, you're what still he, in US. What, DMV, what he call me? Mm -hmm. He said, I know what that mean. I know what that mean. And looked it up and it mean queen. Queen. Huh. The man called me Bonita. Pretty. That's yeah. all I hear. I don't hear the H's and the B's. Yeah, and the, oh, none of it. It's not. Well, or worse, you're just invisible. Ex now that's the part and in completely invisible uh -huh. yeah the validating of my experience and my uh -huh. existence is real here like i'm completely seen like by mm -hmm. locals mm -hmm. and other people with the same yeah. journey yeah. um so yeah definitely not the states definitely uh -huh. not like that uh -huh. at all at they all. actually really like black people uh -huh. here and they speak they, they everybody speak to you they do. Everywhere. And it's not just high. It's buenas noches, buenas tardes, buenas yeah. dias. Como esta? You know, they, yeah. they're very yeah. mucho gusto. Mm -hmm. You know, they're very loving yes. very. culture of people. They're very family oriented. Very. Um, yes. I was in the the other day. <laughs> and I pulled in and the man said, hablo español. I said, muy poquito. He said, I speak English. <laughs> <laughs> Can I oh, practice? Yes. <laughs> yeah, oh, they love, they love, they want you to speak English because they want to learn English. Right. Yes. They actually want to learn. Because I went, we went to the restaurant right. and I was like, oh, I'm sorry, I don't speak. He said, it's okay. I want to learn, talk English, don't yeah. speak Spanish. Yeah. I want to learn. <laughs> yeah. So I'm at the gas station. The guy, like, I speak English and he's like, how long do you live here? I said, yeah, I live here. And he said, forever? I said, forever, uh -huh, ever. Uh -huh. And he said, you Mexican now. <laughs> Dear Benitos, which means welcome, right? Uh -huh. yeah. And that is the experience. Yep. Everywhere I go. Everywhere. They got Wakanda forever, big billboard, uh -huh. huge Viola Davis, the woman <laughs> king, huge billboard yep. at bus stops. Mm -hmm. In the mall, when you walk at H&M, they have black models on there. Dark skin, like really long. Yeah, I'm trying not, to get not, up, what, not just light skinned it with good hair. No, not just skin. light skinned it with good hair. Exactly yeah. with the green eyes. You know, talking about she right. No, we talking about the afro, the uh -huh. sister with the locks. Yep. And they yeah. look at you, but they don't look at you with a threat of intimidation. Mm -hmm. They look not at enough. you and wonder, like, they like, oh my goodness, black women. You know, yeah, yes. yes. black yes. women. Uh -huh. Yeah, they they really. This is the most acceptance mm -hmm. that I've ever felt in yeah. a community, mm -hmm. in a culture, in mm -hmm. a country mm -hmm. with people. Mm -hmm. I'm not scared. Uh -huh. I'm not intimidated. No, not at all. Mm -hmm. The guys like me, the little dude at the Home Depot, he got my phone number, but I'm scared to talk to him, y'all. I don't know Spanish, <laughs> but he won't take me dancing. But they all little and cute, <laughs> and they sweet, and they strong, and they work six days a week, well, and they oh, yes. hard. Oh yes, they work hard yeah. and they party. Yeah, Ooh, yes. these people they go out, uh -huh. they enjoy their lives. They yeah. do more in a day than oh, 
wow. we could do in years. In States, <laughs> honestly. Okay. Yeah, I, I, we see that. We've seen that. And I yeah. love the fact that even in the language, buenos dias, it's, it's plural. So it's mm -hmm. like they're wishing you good days forever, right? Yeah, not, right. Just, not just today, yeah, but no. lots of good days, right? Yeah, exactly. And I think that that is indicative of what we saw when, when you know, when we were there. <clears throat> Excuse me. I loved seeing the multi-generational families, oh, families hanging yes. out. Oh, well, they way. all go. In the Everybody. restaurant, at the beach, you know, they all taking go. walks. Yes. Everybody. Everybody. Grandma Everybody. to the babies. Yeah. And you don't see that as much in the States. It has to be some kind of special occasion. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. So Trey is saying, how do we find out about those residency, the residency programs? So I would say um, I'm not um, like a SME, a subject matter expert on this part. So I would say research, number one, go to the embassy website, um, look up everything you can mm -hmm. on residency programs. I know, Alicia and Rick have gone through the process. Um, yeah. So look at people who've gone through the process mm -hmm. and they will tell you what to do. I'm, I'm an avid um, um, supporter of mm -hmm. consultations. Mm -hmm. so book a consultation with somebody and talk to them and ask them questions. Mm -hmm. Consultations are the best way to talk to the people who are the experts mm -hmm. or who have the mm -hmm. experience yeah. and the knowledge on the things that you want to do. So yeah. don't be... You know, the states keep everybody like measured down to uh -huh. a molecule. Oh, yeah. They minimize you down to about this much of existence. So yeah, explore, yeah. open up yeah. a little bit mm -hmm. and ask, communicate, talk to people about anything that you want to talk to the people who have done it. Yeah. Always yeah. tell my mama, if I'm in a drug program, I don't care about your degree. I mean, it's nice. <laughs> but I'm going to probably pick the brother that was a drug uh -huh. addict and had been off of uh -huh. it for 20 years yeah. and can show me how yep. to get off. You know what I'm saying? Hello. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So we do have a video on getting residency in Mexico and getting res residency in Portugal. It was it's called getting res residency in two countries at the same time, because that's what we were doing. Crazy, crazy, crazy. I don't know what I was thinking, but now that it's over, I'm glad that it's over. We did it. <laughs> but anyway, we did that one back in august so um yeah just look in our videos and you'll see getting residency in uh in mexico and in portugal look at the videos y'all look mm -hmm. at the video yeah I'm yes invest some time and just take a yes. day get a cup of coffee or a glass of wine baby because <laughs> <laughs> you, right because you know we go a little long here we go a little long so greta asks how are you adjusting to the heat and humidity Hey Greta. So um, it's a it's a process, yeah. and uh, it does take adaptation. Yeah. But the great thing is, as a melanated being, I would much rather the heat than the cold any day. Mm -hmm. um, and your body will automatically yes, adjust. Will. Yeah. So I came in the hottest possible month to see if I could endure the heat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I suggest was that like August or something? That July? was June. I came okay. in June. Okay, yeah. And because May, May, June, July are like the hottest. I call it taki chip hot. The little taki chip. <laughs> yeah, I know what taki <laughs> chips are. The taki chips is burning the lining out of some people's stomach. <laughs> they in the hospital, it's, and that would be here. That's yeah. very close. Um, so yeah. I want to lie. I will tell you, it is blaze. It's not. Yeah. It's a different type of heat, too, because yeah. it's a wet heat. So we lived in California, which uh -huh. is a dry, dry heat. heat. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, um, but you do, you know, yeah. but here uh -huh. it allows you to breathe, but you just sweat oh. constantly. Yeah. But it's good. My skin is good. It's good for your skin. skin. Yeah, it's good yeah. for your skin. Oh. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. So it's good. Let it sweat out all those impurities uh -huh. and all of that stuff out yeah. of your skin. And then another thing about the culture is everybody here goes out at night anyway. Yeah. So in everybody. the daytime, yeah. like the little boy can, he won't play basketball. I said, baby, first of all, you're going to be by yourself. And second, you're going to die because it's too hot. <laughs> it's too hot. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot go. After the sun goes down, baby. After the exactly. sun goes down. And that's what they do. They play baseball games yep. at 10 p.m. Yep. Mm -hmm. And the kids are out there yeah, at everybody. midnight. They playing soccer. soccer. Mm -hmm. So you just adjust your life. Mm -hmm. To yes. me, for me, it was a total shift. A yes. parallel shift. Um, a polar, I'm sorry, a polar shift yeah, yeah, from yeah. where I was. So 
Yeah. And the day we stay in, yeah. and we enjoy our day. And at the night, everybody goes out, out and party. Everybody. I mean, and you say everybody, I mean everybody. Everybody, everybody goes out. So that's how we handle it. We just live like men. You know, it's it's interesting because it's kind of like that here as well. Um, obviously, we don't have a heat. But Portuguese don't eat dinner typically until about 730. Right. Uh -huh. That's when they the, like the, the yeah. restaurants don't even open back up uh, for dinner exactly. until like seven o'clock. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it's nothing to see, like see kids. Uh, we live across the street from a park mm -hmm. in the park at night on the yeah. swings. Mom and daddy, sometimes no mom and daddy, you know, um, mm -hmm. in, in that you just would never see that in the state. Maybe when I was little, mm -hmm. maybe when I was little. And you didn't have to be home before the lights came on. <laughs> it was still safe enough for kids to be playing in the park. But here, you know, everything is later. We find ourselves up. We used to be in the bed by 10 o'clock. Oh, 10 o'clock. It's 10 time o'clock. It's time to go to bed. Oh, yeah. right? But now it's like midnight, one o'clock in the morning on a regular. So exactly. you came in June. Um, I came to so visit in June. You came to visit in June. So, so Lily Bell is asking how long y'all been there in Mexico? Okay. So, hey, Lily. So we've been here um, five months in, what's the day? On the ninth. So in five more days, we'll be here five months. Okay. 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 So to visit and then went back and got my mom. Yeah, got me. Um, so that's almost that's almost a half a year. So Auntie Trey says, how is the art scene there? Hey, Auntie Trey. So the art scene is off the chain. Oh, my yeah, goodness. Oh my there's goodness. so much to do in Mexico. Oh. In Merida, it, you will spend all your money and your time because they're going to take it off because there's so much to do. Yeah. They have art museums. They have so much uh, culture. Mm -hmm. Mex mm. Merida is so rich. In Mexico, period, I think it's so rich in culture. Yeah. So yeah. you have the Aztec, um, you have Mayans, Mayans yep. mm -hmm. you have all of this. You have the pyramids mm -hmm. they have here. Mm -hmm. This is also the location, supposed to be the location of the extinction of the dinosaurs. Uh, so they have a uh -huh. dinosaur, right? So they have a dinosaur museum here. Uh -huh. This is also the epicenter of unidentified flying objects. So <laughs> UFOs are seen the most over Mexico. They have a whole museum well, with that. So different types of art form. Endless, um, endless and then the surrounding cities like Canada, which is rich with like more Aztec type uh -huh. of um, information in museums. It is endless. Even the um, library. Yeah. They have an English speaking library here uh -huh. where you can oh. Yes, you yeah. can. And they have, they actually have Spanish classes there too. Uh -huh, yeah. Again, I don't think about it. Um, so they have a lot of uh, different cultural, you know, transferred over to American where you can understand the English. Right, um, right, right. Of, right, of Mexican culture and information. So I would say it probably is endless. I love it. I love it. I'm just going to give up. Dancing mm -hmm. the all the time. They shut down oh. Central the other day because they had a concert here. Oh, um, so okay. They put up a stage in the middle of these uh -huh. people party. Y'all yeah, they party. Yeah, it is serious. I mean, very. Them same ones very. in y'all neighborhood that's up in. <laughs> 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 yeah, I I that's that's the one thing. one thing. If you if you want peace and quiet all the time, Mexico may not be the place for you. You gonna have to go way on the outside. But, yeah, but you get there in the festivities. The festivities of it. You can't help it. Yes. Some of that yes, yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> so I just want to give a shout out to Letitia. Thank you so, so much for the super chat. Y'all know that our super chat money goes to our scholarship fund. We just finished our um, challenge, last challenge of the year, our Get Your Money Straight one week challenge. I mean, literally just yesterday. Yeah, just yesterday. And I think everybody got a lot of good stuff out of it based upon the survey uh, that I'm getting, the feedback surveys that I'm getting. So um, so thank you, Letitia. We will make sure that that money goes to someone who may not have the money to take our challenge, but wants to get their money straight. We love it. We love it. We love it. 
Um, so I let me see. I know someone asked. Oh, there it is. Action VJ. Are you considering um, other Mexican cities or is Merida the one? So mom and I talked about it mm -hmm. and I want to travel because she's been everywhere. I haven't been. <laughs> so she's down. She's like, when you ready? Uh -huh. so yep. They have a thing here called an auto bus, which will take oh, yeah. you to different cities for a very affordable price, seven dollars. Yeah. Yeah. And you can travel all throughout Mexico. Mm -hmm. So we want to explore mm -hmm. Mexico and leave Merida as our base home. There you now go. okay. Where else calls us and beckons oh, us? We and go. We find like <laughs> where it's even cooler. You yeah. know, we like this is like Merida, but it's cooler. Um, we may, but it would be many years off. Um, it's not only Merida, but I just have friends here, mm -hmm. and yeah. you know, in this short period of time, I have so much life and I mean. um, more than I had in the states. With oh, just you know, oh. good food, good people, healthy mm -hmm. relationships, healthy food. And things like so, I'm enjoying where I am. I but we're exactly. definitely going to explore, yeah. and I'll put it on my channel wherever we go. Yeah. I'll yeah. take you know whoever's watching with us, like you guys do. I always see you. We we in Puerto Vallarta. I'm like I gotta go to Puerto Vallarta. <laughs> <laughs> so I so you 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 touched on this, but I'm gonna I'm gonna ask straight out. How has your mental health been since oh. you've been living in Mexico? Look at mom. Look at mom. Woo! So, mm -hmm. y'all might can make a cry. So, <laughs> I mean, yeah. so a, a little um, history. So, my mom had six strokes in five years. Yep. Oh, um, my. Yeah, many years. It's been what, 20 years? Yeah, 20, 20 years ago. ago. Uh -huh. um, so, but you know, we got residuals from that neurological effects that last throughout the rest of uh -huh. your life, you yeah. know. Um, and trauma also oh, was tied uh -huh. into that. Um, me, myself, I talk about on my channel my PTSD and being triggered in the States and how oh. I was not doing well, y'all. At all. Uh -uh. I wasn't doing well. Uh -uh. I wasn't doing well. And I know now I wasn't, but then I knew too. I just don't know the degree. Oh, now I know right. the degree in which I wasn't doing well, right? Right. So, and and the behavior acting out, the isolation, mm -hmm. um, which is huge in the States. We isolate so much. much. Yes. I mean, oh my God. We really isolate. Yeah. And that's so unhealthy, y'all. Mm -hmm. It is not good to be solely just I having personal time and private time is one thing, but isolation. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, we can definitely tied into depression uh -huh. and we start getting kind of neurological and psychological, right? My yeah. mom has a degree in psychology, so yeah. I get it. <laughs> okay, so um I would say this and this was the deepest root issue or the re root cause of my motivation to come here is because I could not, I knew I wouldn't make it mentally mm -hmm. in the States. Mm -mm. Um, and the fact that I knew um, they would not help me, they're going to medicate me. Yeah, that's right. right. Medicate me and they're going to stick me in a corner and yep. they're going to make me come to the doctor uh -huh. to get more medication uh -huh. and, and pay them again so they can tell me that I've either gotten worse yep. or I'm the same. Uh -huh. But I still need the medicine. Right. So I realized it was my environment that needed to change, not me. Uh -huh. I'm yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. But I just need my outer environment to reflect my soul. And yes. My, who I am as a person. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And so um, I knew that this particularly was for me. I said, I cannot survive. Mm -hmm. All I'm doing is surviving right. in the yeah. States. Right. Not, and that's not living. That's it. Not living. living. That's it. Uh -huh. And when I look, when uh, one of the things that struck me when we went back is how angry everyone is. Yes. Everyone is so angry. Yes. And yes. I'm like, you know, that's not sustainable. Uh -uh. No. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Not at all. Mm -mm. That is not sustainable. It's going to, they're going to implode. Exactly. Yeah. And that's, and that was my other motivation because uh -huh. eventually it will implode. Uh -huh. The, yeah. the, what the power of the water can boil for, for so long uh -huh. before <laughs> it over, right? Uh -huh. So I feel it coming. I know it's coming. I don't know when, but it, at some point, the people will get tired. I don't know how much it will take. I don't even know if my lifetime will see it. 
um, maybe my grandkids or something. But at some point, it's like I said on my video, the people have the power. They just don't know they have it. And so I said, I don't have the power to change outside, but I got the power to change what's going on uh -huh. in my world. Uh -huh. That's so right. I, I think for me and my sanity and mm -hmm. my not only mental health, physical health, emotional yeah. health, psychological health, all of it, the whole thing, we got to go. Yeah, yeah, and I would rather try somewhere else, else and yeah. fail mm -hmm, mm -hmm. than to not try at all yeah. and keep going through the same things that I'm going through with them perpetually getting worse. worse. Yes, yes, it's not gonna get any better. Mm -mm. And mm -mm. I, oh, I cannot even fault the people in the states for being angry because I came to a realization the other day. Mm -hmm. I was angry. <laughs> oh, this is what I'm saying. That's exactly my point, Halisi. I'm thinking like when we talk about these people, right? Um, and how they act and how they're, they, they're scared of us, right? Because in their mind, they're like, they've been through so much. Shouldn't they be angry? Shouldn't they be tearing down stuff? Uh -huh. Shouldn't they be outraged? Shouldn't they just like destroy the whole joint? <laughs> we not. We not. And I'm like, yeah, shouldn't we? <laughs> shouldn't we? You know, like when I thought about it, I was like, oh, we should. Should we? Like, I'm like, yeah, we probably should be right. We should not be feeding the system a trillion dollars a year. A year. Oh man. A trillion dollars a year. Yes. yes. Entertainment, celebrities. Apple keys, all these companies and corporations that are not doing not one thing. Not one. No, not, one. not, not internally with whom they hire, not externally with who they contract with. You know, you like, I think, I think uh, black folks prop up Hennessy. Hmm. And yet Hennessy does not subcontract with in last time I checked with any black vendors. Oh, not at all. Right. So so Evelyn wants to know. So y'all buy a one way ticket. You know, we did. Yep. <laughs> oh, we yeah. bought one way tickets and they were cheap. They were only like three hundred dollars a piece. Or something yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. That's like a coach bag. right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can go to a whole little country for a place yeah, I want to put bag. it. So, so Nubia Net says geckos are good luck. Yes, they are. And they can be good luck outside my house. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Because I did not want to wake up to him on top of me going. That's my fear. <laughs> you know? Then I wake up and the one on the wall and pop right in my face. And that's going to be, it's going to be over. He just won't kiss you good morning. So, you know. Outside. I'll meet him outside. <laughs> Thank you. Thank See you. you and I don't look. I don't look at geckos as the same as roaches or anything. I don't. Oh, I no. don't. They don't. To me, they don't equal filth. Right. No. But I just. I don't want them crawling on me. I can't. I can't. You I know. Can't. I. You know. I can. I can love them from afar. Over there. Uh -huh. Over right. There the tree. <laughs> I'm just That's trying so to tell it's you. It's too much. It's too much. I'm and it's not one of them because they all over oh, the place oh, and they okay. this big and that big and this big and that big mm -hmm. and they have babies and they get little and crawl <laughs> in the stuff. They, and right. And I remember when we were in Florida on one of the islands um, that is off of Tampa, right? Is that where we were? Yeah. And so that's the uh, Gulf of Mexico. Mm -hmm. Though, I don't know if they were geckos or lizards or what. I don't know. But they were so small. They oh, were like this. And yeah. when we would go to the outdoor showers uh, to get the sand off and everything, they would scramble like roaches. Mm. <laughs> there were oh. so many of Ooh. them. It was like you went into so-and-so's house. You know so-and-so who, I know when so you so turn so. on the light, yeah, and it's are. like everything scatters. Yeah, uh -huh. It was like that. But daytime, oh. at the sh I mean, there they were. And then, of course, you'd find the bigger ones as well. Yeah. But yeah, really, I had never bitty. seen that one before. Because yeah. in California, I'm sure the lizards have to be small like that at some point. But I never saw that. I never seen it. I didn't know they came. Every time I see them, they already... Like you exactly, said. they're teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> you never see the baby. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. No. <laughs> <laughs> tell us really. Tell us how you really feel. <laughs> I, I, I want. I, I don't want to beat around the bush. <laughs> Let me stop beating around the bush. 
No, <laughs> I ain't not never, never. You understand me? I would not give up this type of lifestyle. This is. This I'm willing to do whatever it takes to sustain this type of lifestyle. Yeah, because I'm, I'm. Finally, there's some type of reciprocation. Yeah. Um, in the states, you just give and you give yeah, and you well, give. Constantly. You give to the system. Constantly. You give to your job. You give to your kids. You give. You give. You do give, give to you depleted, uh -huh. and you ain't got nothing left for you. Uh -huh. And that's why everybody angry. Uh huh. Uh huh. That's why they angry. Uh huh. So for me, it it would be against any health advice from anybody, including myself, to take go back there to visit. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> that's a hard yes. Too. I'm hard, like, I'll yeah. pay for your ticket. You just got to come see me. You know what I mean? Because I just don't. Right. If I have my way, we say we tell everybody, look, we meet you in Mexico. Mm -hmm. yeah. our, our second home. We meet you in yeah. Mexico. Yeah, it, you know, and I'm telling you, once my parents transition, it's really gonna be I'll meet oh, you yeah. in Mexico. Oh yeah, all ties will be cut. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I can't ask my mom and daddy to do that. Right. But other than yeah. that, how does the heat work oh, with hot God. flashes? I'm so glad you asked that. Oh. How about <laughs> I know I'm about that. Good questions, because you're talking to the hot flash queen right now. <laughs> right now, I'm surprised it ain't little beads right around where my hairline used to be. Mm -hmm. Look, let me tell you about these hot flashes. <laughs> <laughs> Down here is better because it's hotter than the flash. I thought I might just blow up, like <laughs> combust. Combust. Like I'm gonna just, you know, mm. but I didn't. So in the summertime, it's so hot <laughs> that you don't feel them. <laughs> it's hotter outside because you there's, hot there's flash something to be inside. said about that. Yep, yeah, because yep, hot yep. flash you be burning up inside. You know, flames inside. But since it's like Satan on the outside, then your little mini hell ain't as bad as <laughs> the fire that's going on outside of you. But I in the space, but, he, but now I feel them since it's cooler. Yeah. Right. I have them a little bit highly important for people that are suffering with hot flashes. I've been with you, I am where you are for many years. <laughs> Lots of water, like ridiculous is a mom more not too much kill yourself though just you know moderation but water throughout the day no salt no sugar mm -hmm. and you will sleep like a champ uh -huh. i had the best sleep when i came here no salt no sugar i know that's everything I know <laughs> well not not here actually not, they, they're regulated here they so. uh, yeah you can i mean put... you know i mean don't intake salt and sugar like before you go to bed don't drink a coca-cola right right, right you right. feel me because but you i can eat that hot fudge sunday though right no, you might not want to do that. <laughs> no, you might not want to do that. Just, that's what I found. And I'm like about 10 years in with the flashes. So, I just, oh my God. Oh my God. And I'm like, they won't go away. So I keep waiting for the day, but they won't. But um, no. yeah. yeah. I'm so I notice that when I'm out walking and then I'm sweating, I don't feel them. So in my mind, I don't have them during the day. Because right. we're out walking, uh, you know, up, up and down these hills. Because, you know, Lisbon is very hilly. So mm -hmm. up and down these hills, I'm sweating. And it's like, I don't know. Am I flashing? And right. Or am I just... That's it. It's not. So you sweating anyway. Yeah. Exactly. So it's like, it's almost like an even... Like you don't feel them as much. Yeah. Because you're sweating anyway. It's hot anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wait, wait, What? I saw Black yes, Panther Wakanda forever, and Merit of Mexico was featured in the story. Yeah, of we was in that theater. If y'all haven't seen my Wakanda forever, we, we haven't yet. We because haven't because I got COVID. Oh. We were supposed to go with we were supposed to go with Black in Portugal, the the the, the, uh, Facebook, the group. Facebook group yeah. here, and I caught COVID. Oh. It's still in the theaters. Go see it because we did brothers and. So uh -huh. Brothers and sisters of Merida did Davida over there. Shout out to Davida. She's always putting together nice things, and we all she rented out the whole theater for us. Wow! Wow! Yeah, I got a video. Go to my channel, to your Nikki. Y'all know. Oh, me. I'm definitely. Channel, and I, I did a video that. on it. It was sold out. Wow. Yeah. And so they had another theater playing at the same time with overage people who wanted to not be in a group but still come. So we were packed, and I got video footage of it. You can see all the people that were there. They wore, I mean, wore beautiful lots. outfits, lots. Oh. beautiful 
hair things and yeah, it was yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was nice. Wow. It was so nice. The headdress. Yeah, the headdress. It was so nice. We, I got in the DD, I got in the Uber to go, and a man saw where I was going, and he said, uh, Grand uh, Cinemax. I said, C. He said, Wakanda forever. I said, <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes, he knew. I and love it. That's what we talk. They said Merida in the movie, and we all exploded. Oh. <laughs> it was like, we're actually in the movie. They said Merida, y'all. I said, wow. I can't wait to see it. I cannot I wait. It's kind of omen. I think it's yeah, see, going on. see, and um, here in in Portugal, a lot of the movies are in English and just Portuguese oh. subtitles. That's how which, ma English which makes it really and easy, English right? Subtitles. And the platinum so, theater, honey, with the leather seats, and you push right. It, and and how? Wait, 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 wait. How much? How much was the movie? Seven dollars. You hear that, y'all? <laughs> That's now. What with leather seats and the people bring you food. Right. They got, alcohol. they got alcohol too. They bring you drinks. And the food is like really a good price. The drinks are a great price. The only theater that was still that price. That well, did we go after COVID? I'm not sure that I've been since COVID, but at least right before COVID, was the theater that everybody got shot up in. Oh in in Denver. Oh. All the rest of them, thirteen dollars and everything oh, else, and then in LA, fifteen dollars. Oh, oh yeah, easy. Here, the VIP tickets, so you get the good seats with that layback and all of that. All of them yeah. are leather, but you get it. But they serve the ones that are straight in the middle, at perfect height, right? Those mm -hmm. seats um, were going for seven ninety five euro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so we could have gotten mm -hmm. six ninety five, you know, six euro ninety five cents, mm -hmm. um, and it's pretty even dollar for dollar here. Yeah. Um, so Isan One Ben wants to know um, what oh. about healthcare? I noticed that there was oh. talk about having trouble getting services <laughs> and emergencies, and that they require money up front. Okay, so um, you know, I'm always telling y'all go back and look at the videos. We got videos mm -hmm. on healthcare, so. This is what I know so far. Um, so there is expat insurance that no matter where you go, you could pay them and you'll have coverage. The most um, accepted insurance in Merida is Cigna. Cigna, okay? Okay. So, for example, Cortez came. Y'all seen his video where he had surgery and all of that. So his insurance paid for it. I don't know if they pay for the whole thing or the, uh, uh, you know, 80% of it or whatever. Right. Um, however, um, mm -hmm. if you are a permanent resident here, you can go to the IMSS, which is the equivalent of social services in the state, and you can get local health care. They have packages. Mm -hmm. I looked at one for like $46 that covers your prescription, doctor's visits, dental, and and um, vision, mm -hmm. right? Um Otherwise, if you don't have insurance, you have to pay out of pocket. So Mama J goes to the doctor. Shout out to Dr. Jose. Yeah. And he's great. He takes care of the many expats that are here. <laughs> it costs $20 to go see him. And it's one-on-one. -on -one. It's not in the office. Uh -uh. You don't have to listen to whole music. Uh -uh. You got his WhatsApp. <laughs> you can talk directly to him on WhatsApp. Even if you have a question, uh -huh. he will answer you. See here, you don't have to go through all these changes with you just directly having to have a prerequisite and this and that and go through the website and form yeah. uh -huh. and Standing then in line, go waiting. from this place to get this test here and then that oh, place there. to get this uh -huh. test here. So the way it's structured here is everybody come to your house. You can call and they will come to your house and give you an EKG. They will come to your house and take your blood work and take it back to the lab, send you a text or a WhatsApp and tell you everything, email with everything, send, or send a copy to your doctor. You can order your prescriptions. They will deliver them to your house. Yes. Mama J gives her prescriptions. It's like yeah. I did a video on for Sega. Uh -huh. For Sega is 500 and how much was it? $958 in the States or uh -huh. something like that? 900 Nine hundred fifty-eight dollars mm -hmm. in the states. Yeah. Here was forty-five dollars. It was forty-five dollars. Okay, wow. that's her most expensive medication. Yeah. The other one she uh -huh. got like four or five of them it was sixteen USD. Um, oh, total for all of them. 
Everything. There are pharmacies basically on every other corner. Yes, they yes. also yes. have a separate pharmacy that only sells generic. So it's not all in one. You got one pharmacy that sells generic and name brand, and then one that just similarities that sells just generic. So you have a choice. The, the pharmacies are here open 24 hours a day. A day. Mm -hmm. They will come deliver it to your house. Your doctor can have it delivered to your house. Um, so mm -hmm. to me, this is probably the best healthcare system to address mm -hmm. the part by paying up front. If you go to the hospital, you have an emergency, you gonna have to pay that bill. Straight facts. If you look at Cortez's video, anybody, Robert, another one of his people, yeah. went yeah. to the hospital, his bill was expensive and you got to pay it. They will not let you leave without paying that pay. bill. Okay. So it's important that when you come in, you have emergency funds access to emergency funds because right. they will take your passport <laughs> and they will hold it until yeah. you pay right. them mm -hmm. they are serious about their coins now on the flip side there's also an um, not american but an expat hospital where you can be billed okay but a normal mexican hospital is not going to build mm -hmm. okay so you have to and i don't know what is expat hospital is i'll find out i'll let rick and Alyssa know and i'll do a video on my channel um but they will let you you know make a payment and then make ongoing payments um until you pay off the bill but yeah. typically and they have various hospitals and they're all good uh you can talk directly to your anesthesiologist you can talk directly to whoever's part of a procedure you may be having or if you have any questions you don't have to go through a bunch of red uh -uh, tape, uh -uh. get referrals and all this uh -uh. stuff. So for me, the healthcare system is better here. My mom has had great experiences. Oh, yes, definitely. We can call and Dr. Jose, he will come to your house. They have house visits. Yeah. Yep. They saw that. House visit. And also, if you go to their office, it's just you. Yep. There's not a line in the no, lobby. No line. There's not somebody. It's just you mm -hmm. and the doctor. And it's not twenty dollars yes. for five minutes. It's twenty dollars till we get through talking. Till we figure this out. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. Right. And and so here, uh, one of the things. So we just got prescriptions, and I don't know if I told this to our challenge group or last week. I don't know who I said what to, but I was just doing the math as you were talking because those prices are excellent, and I just got three months worth of medication. It was almost two hundred and fifty dollars. Oh. Mm -hmm. But and so that was kind of expensive. It was more expensive than I was expecting because when I was here the last time I got a I got mm -hmm. a refill on my American prescription and it was eight euro. Ninety five cent, 50 cent, right. or something like that. Right. right. Mm -hmm. But this medication was made specifically for me. Mm. Oh, it's wow. all it's all it was all custom to the point where the doctor sent the ingredients in, in what portions the ingredients wow. were supposed to be in there to the lab that made the stuff they just for me. Medication just for you. Wow. Mm -hmm. Like, and like so, custom signature medication. Yeah. Yeah. And so wow. for, for and so for thirty dollars a month, basically. That's worth it. I've got three different, you know, it's, it's, it's supposed to take these hot flashes away. I've only been on it for a week. So I'll let y'all know. <laughs> I'll let y'all know. But yeah, it's, it's um, vitamins, it's part vitamins and then part hormones and this and that. And she's And so then she wants to talk to me after a month. Wow. So to see if it needs any tweaking, but for $30 a month, I got without insurance because we just got our insurance starting tomorrow, today, Sunday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So without insurance, $30 a month for custom medication. That's crazy. Um, that's all living in that just so bad. Right? Mm -hmm. What is yeah. your best advice for someone like me? I will be moving to a new country as a single older person who has to learn everything all over again. Mm -hmm. um, well, older person, that's all of us. <laughs> that's, the, that's the whole point of it. <laughs> That's all of us. So, um, I, you know, I will just say this will make you younger, Lucille. It sure will. It will. It will. This is, yeah. it, how do you how, how do you say that, Mom? I came here and I didn't know that I had so many problems. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that I was depressed and upset. And I, I, I just I dealt with it, you know, in the United States. Yeah, live with it. Mm -hmm. 
if you call that living. No, <laughs> but when I got here, I felt different. Mm. That's it. And I went to the doctor. He said, your blood pressure, oh, it's low. I said, what? What? Yes. My blood pressure has constantly been low. I have high blood pressure and I got it from my mother, but it's like 95 over the wow. 55. Wow. Wow. He went to the doctor and asked him, is that too low? He said no. That's uh -uh. Too he said no. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's about what mine is. Yeah, he said that's 95. Cool. Yes. See? And See? three, she was on bleed, three blood pressure oh, medications. Right. Oh. He took her off of two, right? Yep. So she's just on the one. one. And then he she was taking that every day. Now she takes it every two. Two days. Three. Every three, three days. days. Every three she days. was wow. doing it and it was still so low, so he said take it and do it every three. Uh -huh. So she's off of the two yeah. high pressure medications. Yeah. And so I, I would just say, Lucille, you know, you've heard from all of us, and mm -hmm. Rick had the same situation with his with his blood pressure too, coming yeah. down. Yeah. Um mm -hmm. and there are days when it gets frustrating. Like it took four different tries for me to get money out of the ATM machine because <laughs> I could not figure I, I could not figure out how to get it to go to English. And, you know, most of them do, mm -hmm. but I could not it, it was not giving me that option. And so I'm like, OK, that's just that machine. So then I go to another and another. And so you do have those days. Um, but those, I mean, they're. They're very small pains. But if and, that's the worst thing, yeah. thing that can happen, <laughs> it's if not that, that there's no money that. in the bank because right. Uncle Sam and the utilities uh -huh. and, and, and and $10 McMeals have taken it. It's just, <laughs> it's just, I can't. And then, and then I get nervous because then there's a line and I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to use my yep. camera to, to uh -huh. do the translation. Uh -huh. <laughs> Oh. Right now, I've just memorized the buttons to push, um, you know, and so. But I, it, there's nobody rushing you. But there's nobody. No, no that's an American you. thing. That's, it's in your head that you're trying to rush to get this done because, oh, God, I don't yeah. want to hold up the line. The cash, the cashiers, anybody and everybody yeah. in those service industries are not rushing and they will tell you, take your time. Uh, this I, this is I, Portugal. I don't take your time. I, and same right. thing when we were in Mexico. You're in Mexico now. Take your time. Yes. Yeah. We don't had worry. we had the Uber driver, the Didi driver, tell us that we were. So yes, the other day when we went to get new SIM cards for our cell phone, and he's asking me like for a copy of the passport and our tax ID number, and I'm like, he's like, I'm in no oh, rush. Oh. I'm here. I'm here all day. I and mean, if time. you're in a rush, okay, but I'm not in. Yeah. <laughs> Take your time. So also, Lucille, just, you know, you're not alone. No. You're not alone. You go no. to places. There's there's Facebook groups. Yeah. You know, there's there's our people mm -hmm. are, are pretty much everywhere. Everywhere, yeah. And we are each other each other's we're family. Yeah. That's <laughs> we, right. we we talked to Nikki, what? What a couple of weeks ago when we yep. first talked about doing this thing, I've yep. been following her. We've been following her on on her channel, and I, I told her the first time I saw her on Car Cartez's channel, and it's like we got to talk to her. We got to yes. we got to get together. So you have community. There's yeah. community yeah. out here. Well, community yeah, there truly is. Yeah. Uh -huh. Seriously, um, is if you look at our Instagram or, or anything, you see we have people over for Thanksgiving who don't celebrate Thanksgiving. You know, we play. We taught them how to play spades. And, uh -huh. and it's like, <laughs> where were these people when we were in the states? Where were all these cool yeah. people? Yeah. And you know, they could have been there, but maybe they were so stressed out that uh -huh. we could not find. Yeah. You know, they did. I couldn't connect with they any. They buried on the BS. That's where they at. They buried yeah. under the BS. That's yeah. where they at. They right. Buried under that stress. So stress yeah, stress. give give yourself the chance because you meet yeah. a lot of good people and you meet good people and the yes. people you're meeting are like-minded yes. people so get We're in the Facebook all in this groups. doing this thing as yes. Cartel said just do the damn thing yeah exactly. <laughs>
<laughs> when we came seriously, when we came here, we got a, we were in Black and Portugal Facebook group. They have events, brothers and sisters Emerita. They have events, so we made sure we went to that first event mm -hmm. uh, when we were here back in June, and we met all these wonderful people. And so when we came back here, you have to go home, getting our stuff, come back. And, you know, we had, when are you coming? Do you want us to pick you up from the airport? You know, they met us for dinner. We had Rick's birthday dinner with friends here in Portugal. It was so nice to write out that visa stuff and say, we got friends waiting for us to come back. That's right. We got friends. So Auntie That's Trey right. says, I went to the supermarket and I could barely concentrate. I was so focused on my surroundings and being cognizant of everything going on around me because, you know, just in case something starts popping off. That's right. Yeah. I know about it. Yep. Yeah. I had that experience. I was at the market the other day and I left my bag in the first part, you know, the little cradle right here. Any other time if I was in and I noticed it, I immediately looked at it like, oh, I better get my bag. But then I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> and so I left it there and people passed by and they ain't paying no attention to that uh -huh. bag. Uh -huh. No. Damn, mm -hmm. not paying any attention. It's just a completely different shift. Mm -hmm. Not only in the way the environment, but the way you behave in yep. that environment. Uh -huh. Yes. You know, your triggers yep. in that environment. Yep. Yeah. So Letitia asks, how long did you prepare before you left? Did you build a, a runway like savings prior to departure? Absolutely. I looked at my money matters. I looked at um, mm -hmm. everything, every aspect of my life and how it would be affected in making this move. Mm -hmm. And what had weight, I let it have weight <laughs> and what didn't, I let it go. And I didn't, um, I didn't really put it in my measurements, you know what I mean? on what I wanted to do. So definitely savings. Um, I also measured out how much it would cost for me to survive off for a certain amount of time. Um, and what I needed to do as far as income and outcome, mm -hmm. Um, so definitely go through, um, and do that. Look at your finances. That's number one. Uh, the best, the wonderful thing about it is it won't take you as much to live. Um, so that'll give you a quick, you'll be like, oh my God, I feel the relief when you just look at your bills, compare them to what you're paying now, oh, right. what you were paying if you move abroad. You're like, whoa, that puts this amount of money back in my pocket. I can pay three months for what I pay one month here. So exactly. at least I don't have to make it three months. And the thing about it is if you don't, if you can't make it and this, you can always go back to the States. It's going to be sitting right there. Waiting. <laughs> It'll be there. Yeah. It'll be. Okay. I didn't do that right. So don't pay attention to that. I was just trying to type that out. Um, and so for Rick and I, we had been already on this road to financial independence. I'm going to put the ready to retire toolkit in the comments. Don't pay attention to the first one. Cause I typed it wrong. I put toolkit. <laughs> So I'm copying and pasting now. Guys, because this is invaluable information is. that Rick it's, and Alyssa is giving you yeah. so that you can financially plan. Because a lot of us, and we talked about this before we went on air live, is that people don't know how to do it. Uh -huh, it's not yeah. something that was passed down uh -huh. from our parents mm -hmm. on how to mm -hmm. move this mm -hmm. money, how to work the money, how to invest, mm -hmm. how to do financial planning and investing. So uh, this is invaluable information. Yeah. I'll take it full advantage yeah. Definitely, definitely, definitely. We talked about the do we the ambulance service costs. Do we know what those are? Can you pay via credit card for medical expenses? I, I seems yeah. to me that I remember Cartez talking about uh, whipping out a credit card. You can use credit card. Yeah, you, you can use it. They only take certain ones. Though. Yeah, probably not American Express. Um, no, let me make we sure I did that too, Alyssa, the certain credit cards. Uh -huh. Yeah, but, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Rick and I, let's see. Okay, I didn't. Rick and I saved up two years worth of living expenses as our ramp up. And just know, like you, you. So in the Ready to Retire Toolkit, there is a database that shows the cost of living for any city, any maintenance major or semi-major city on the planet and wow. it will break it down you can put in like a single person living in a one-bedroom apartment inside the city center outside the city center etc 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 and that will give you and then they will break it down like clothing costs about this 
a, a meal with a glass of wine cost about that. Entertainment costs about this. So you can break it down and say, well, some of this stuff I don't do on a regular basis, so I don't need as much, or I love to do that stuff and now I can afford to do it more. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, right? Like you, you can get you can get a latte here for a dollar all day long if you stay out of the tourist areas. Right. So, That's right. The Mm -hmm. Exactly. So Glass Half Full asks, have you connected with, are you doing meetups with the other Black expats in Merida? Honey. Yeah. My oh. plate is full. I mean, so, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Before we get to that, my mama got to go and do stuff. Yeah, so I got to go. Yep. Exodus, okay. So, yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, and then I'll get it to the Okay, mama. Thank you. Okay. She going back. She Thank you, mom. You. Okay. Okay. Thank so. You, mom. <laughs> so um yes and back to what rick and alicia were saying about the groups that's a great place to start if you go to my channel and look i got a expansive one on groups all over the world and then local groups in merida to join that's how you connect like you said with like-minded people and it'll keep get you out and get you to explore the city so i've been able to connect with a lot of people but i'm gonna tell y'all and i've said this on my channel i'm part of a young group they they do too much y'all i'm old i can't be going like <laughs> they want to they want to come home with the sun Girl, every day talking about where are we going after this? Home to bed. What are you yeah. doing? Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. Where are we going? Okay, so but it's a great, it keeps you active. And then I'm also a group, a member of a 50 plus group. And we do things like potluck, play space, you know, and we start early and we end a little earlier. So I gravitate more towards that because it keeps money in my pocket. Yes. And I also am around people, peers, people my age yeah. um, and things like that. So it's something for every age group. It's something for everybody. And yeah. you will be busy because it's something to do in Merida every day. day. Every yes. day. Same with Lisbon. They just started a WhatsApp group through Black in Portugal for 50 plus folks people 50 years old or not. So Naya, um, so as far as the financials go for Mexico or for Portugal, or, or you know, I don't know about anything else. Um, they're going to want to see for the, for the head of household, a certain amount of money, and then it's a reduced amount for, for the dependents. So it could be like $1,500 for the head of household and then 50%, $750 for the spouse and then maybe $400 for dependents. So that's usually how it works. Now, Mexico and Portugal are the same in this regard. This, the country says these are the rules and then the consulates do what they want. Exactly. Yeah. So <laughs> you, yeah, That's right. So depending <laughs> upon which embassy or consulate you go to and what city, that's going to be what they require. Now, I haven't found a good a, a difference in the money piece for Portugal, but everything else is up for grabs. Whether you need to have a, a one year contract or any contract on living and et cetera, et cetera, is going to depend on which embassy you go to. But now with Mexico, we have found that across the country, the amount of money you need to be bringing in varies. We have heard rumor that Southern Texas and Louisiana may be two of the least expensive places that you can get, that those two consulates have lower expectations on the amount of money that you need to be bringing in. Mm -hmm. But it is definitely a, a city by city, state by state thing. Mm -hmm. What is true in Denver is not true in DC, is or not Miami. true in Chicago <laughs> or Miami-Dade, etc. That's not true. Yeah, that's so true. They doing and and what we think is, hey, Krishan, <laughs> um, what we think is that the busier the consulate, the more hoops they want you to jump through, yeah. to, so that they can be less busy. Now, mm -hmm. it's not written anywhere. This is just Halisiisms. <laughs> this is what I think, <laughs> because. Uh, San Francisco for Portugal is out of control. And our immigration person said there's one person, one person doing all of the checking and the work to approve these visas for everything from Colorado West. Yeah, and we didn't know, believe her. California. Well, I believed her, but I was thinking, I okay, did. one person in charge plus a lot of assistance. Uh -uh. Right. No. It's her. 
She, he said, when I say this one person is one person, you ain't got to put it to the care of. They gonna wow. know if when you send in your passport, they know what it's for. Right. I was like, okay. Wow. Um, credit, yeah, I, I, we answered that question. We answered that question. We're going to wrap it up here, folks. I think we did it because as you can see, uh, mom and Nikki are living in their paradise and we want you to find your black utopia as well. You can do it. You can do that. And you can do it. So I, Greta. I know. So how's the food? The food is off the chain. The food, this is what I'm saying, y'all. The food is not, I'm eating fruit with, with, with seeds in it. You know what I'm saying? I'm eating good food, good vegetables, fresh vegetables. They sell them on, you don't have to go to the market. Every colonial or neighborhood has their own markets and they're open and they're selling fresh fruit and vegetables. And, and you can tell in your body. When you start yes. to lose that inflammation and you feel better and sleep mm. better. Better. Yes. That's yes. Good. And the same is true. So not sleeping, but it's not, you know, good sleep. Good it's sleep. just not quality. Yeah. And Absolutely. so I was, I think this is just everywhere else. I don't know. I, we haven't been. We haven't lived in enough places to know, but every single uh, freguesia, which is a colonia, has a, a marketplace where there's a bunch of vendors in there selling their fruits and vegetables yeah. and meats and fish and stuff. Mm -hmm. But then mm -hmm. there's the mini mercados every mm -hmm. half a block. You gonna get right. fresh fruits and vegetables and stuff here. And I we just bought some white grapes, green grapes, whatever you want to call them. In the States, those are sour. Here, mm, first, they so have good. seeds and they yeah. are so sweet. So sweet. So, um, so yeah, I mean, you can, That's you can real. be a vegetarian so inexpensively here and in Mexico. Um, have you made any local friends? No, because we don't oh. speak Portuguese. Oh, y'all made any local friends? <laughs> so, how about you? How about y'all? Oh yeah, we got like my mom. I'm so excited that she gets out because, like, she was talking about not being aware of her issues and traumas um, when she got here. I, I mean, I could see her depression, but she couldn't, and it don't make no difference if you can't see it, right? So once she really saw it, now she's active and going out and meeting people, and this is probably the most in the last decade, really, honestly, um, that she's been able to enjoy going out and being with people her age and productive, forward-thinking, open-minded people. It's a difference, yes. you know, yeah. in the quality of people here. Um, yeah. Like uh, Rick is saying, people with this life journey uh, that we're all on, it just, I say a lot of time on my channel that it doesn't matter where you are, where you're coming from, what your status is, or what you've been through, we're all starting over when we come here. That's right. So we all have that nucleus in common. And we um, I get a lot of support here that I never got in the States. A lot of support. Right. Uh, right. For people that don't really know me. It's been people I've known for years that don't give me the support that people out here have known me for a few months. Give me, you know. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, even our landlord, when he doesn't speak hardly any English, nor his wife, but they are so sweet. And so I can't wait till we get to the point where we can hang out a little bit. Um, and yeah. you know, we did, we did get an opportunity to meet with some subscribers who are native born here, but they speak English. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, Portuguese is, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's going to be a minute y'all. Cause mm -hmm. you know, we grow up hearing Spanish in the States. <laughs> so yeah. it's, so it's, it's right. right. So it, yeah. it, so we know a little something, something, you know, most people know a little something, something. We know a little bit. But um, so, yeah, yeah, we taking your black card, Greta, you because if you don't know spades, you know, you gotta, spades you gotta, you gotta and bones. Know. Greta, 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 don't, let them, don't, don't let them discourage you, honey, because I'm not the greatest spades player either. You got time to learn. You got time. You to learn. Right. I love you. you I love you. Right. I beat his butt the other day. I beat his butt. <laughs> I I had him I had him uh what what do you call it when you when you overbid and then you and then you uh oh man and then you don't get your books <laughs> oh yeah you said it 
Yeah, oh, they yeah. was tripping. I said them right, left, right, left, right, left. I was going to boss him on them. Did you take all his, take all his car? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, because they, they, they look at their hand. Well, I know I can get. No, you can't. Because if you don't have a bunch of, uh, if you have too many of that suit, somebody's going to be cutting. That's right. You already know what it is. You got all the right. hearts. You know somebody cutting them hearts. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. But he counted the ace, the king, the queen. That's three books right there. I you know was just trying to get one, y'all, though. <laughs> 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 I don't know if we realize we are in the midst of an exodus that should be called the second emancipation. Yeah, yes. Absolutely. Alicia and Rick and other content creators are definitely. meeting an underground role. Hello, High that's Vibe. Good. Yes. I say that all the time on my channel. I call Cortez Moses from the day I met him. I said, you parting this sea, baby, and you letting these, helping these people get across for real. For, yeah, real, for real, though. For real. Yeah. And so what, say the name of your channel again. Oh, me? Oh, Tia, Nikki, and Merida. Tia Nikki in the letter N Merida. And it's in um, the description, folks. On YouTube, it's I also have a blog that I put out. I have an email list, um, my website. I have a website, tianikki.com. Please go to my website, y'all. And I really want to plug my course because I do have a course on how to achieve the things that you are trying to do um, to move abroad, wherever you may go. I'm with Halissi. I don't care where you go, just leave. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. It's time to go. Yes, it's time yes. to go for for so, our for our health, for our mental, emo every and spiritual day. health. Absolutely, I absolutely. Know. There's a healing vortex here too that we talked about before. Um, yes, yeah. that you come here, and a lot of people end up coming here and have to have surgery because you got to clean to get their body healed. Uh, so wherever you have trauma. Definitely um, Mexico, and I think just abroad in general, in general, will help you deal with um, deal with it. Face yeah. it. Yeah, and then deal. definitely. Um, is there a market called City Market? So I, are you talking about the City Market that's owned by Kroger's, Greta, or just another generic market called City Market? Do you, have you seen City Market in Merida? Um, no. No city market. Yeah, we I have just, an open market, and um, you know, and each colonial has an open market. Yeah, um, I haven't they seen. They sell, city. you know, fresh, fresh stuff and the yeah. cow they killed yesterday. I have, yeah, I, yeah, I have. If, if you're talking about Kroger's, uh, Greta, I haven't seen any Kroger's in Mexico. Walmart, Costco. Walmart, Costco. Yeah, we have Walmart. We have Costco. But, um, um, we I have the bodega. And I was amazed to find out that the bodega is actually owned by Walmart. How about that? Oh, that's interesting. And High Vibe a, says, life in the States is about being on high alert for mass shooters mm -hmm. and Karens. Absolutely. Don't have to go through that no more here. Right. No, I know we're in Mexico. Yeah. Stations. And, and ESPN. Um, with, you can get that if you have, if you mm -hmm. have Hulu or something like that or whatever, then you need a VPN. Um, I don't know if they've got like here. Yeah, we do. Do they? They have. Do they um, show? Are you looking it, for United States sports? Probably. They have football. Yes, they play football at the. Um, we have a Boston Pizza here, and they play football there. They play the football games at Fridays. You can go to Fridays um, on the weekend, and they have one screen with soccer, and the other one with American football. Yeah, yeah you can see games here. After your temporary residency has expired, do you have to requalify? No, you don't. If you've if you've if you've lived there the time and you've kept your nose clean and all of that, then you just go and reapply. You don't even have to live there. Like if we had gotten temporary residency, we could have flown back in after two years and went there and um, and just got it renewed. So it's just kind of, you know, unless you've got some uh, some you pop up on some system, it's going to be basically an automatic renewal. Can I ask you a question, Alicia, about that? Also, with the temporary residency, after you've done the qualifications for the financial part, when the uh, recertification comes, you don't have to supply that. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. So, um, thank you, Glass Half Full. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I think we have done it. Oh, here's one more. There are lots of Canadians. There are lots of Canadians and Americans in Mexico. Have you noticed them bringing in their attitudes? Um, so, the, so the white folks there. Oh, for here. Oh, ho, ho, yes. So I don't see many. 
people here. Um, but yes, uh, kind of, sort of. Uh, not so direct, but indirectly. Like we were at the jazz club, the other guy, the other day was a white guy there. And he pretty much just, how are you? Where are you from? You know, like the whole thing. But what really did is when he pulled out his picture to show me his black friend back in Florida. So they'd be trying to not be racist by being <laughs> racist. It'd be like a whole bunch, right? And I'm like, why is he showing me his black friends and his black, you know, the sh oh, I have black grandchild. And I, you know, it was a lot. You know what I mean? It was like over, yeah. overcompensation, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So Didn't that, nobody ask you about all that, Ken? Didn't nobody ask <laughs> no, you about no. all that? I don't need to see your grandbabies, boo. Uh-uh. Just no. act right. It doesn't really matter what you say. And I'm watching what you do. And sit down at your table. Yes. Yeah. I'm watching what you life. do. So, so not so intimidate. You know, it's not an intimidation type thing. But, yes, it is definitely yeah. still a... Yeah. Um, um privilege thing. yeah of course of course they don't quite I, and, do that <laughs> and i see it here from time to time but i don't pay them to, no, attention because they don't know whether we're american or portuguese because there's so many black portuguese so they don't know they don't know um so evelyn's trying to give you an out <laughs> I see Evelyn trying to clown on me. <laughs> I was in the wrong game altogether. <laughs> okay, so um, Greta's saying City Market is similar to Whole Foods and it's in Mexico City in Playa del Carmen. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. So, <laughs> thank you, Evelyn. Thank, thank, you, thank you, Evelyn. You, thank you for the super chat. <laughs> All right, so we gonna wrap this up. Tell them again about what you offer, your channel, your consultations, and all of that. Thank you so much, Alicia and Rick. I'm so You're excited. welcome. So, um, <laughs> so um, go to tianicki.com. Everything is set up for you guys there, as far as what you need. So my my baby is my course. So I have a cut the cord course a guide on leaving the USBS, right? So Hello. go to my website, click the course. Yes, click the course tab. This is for people who are just having some problems from roadblocks in getting out of the state. So quickly, there is a breakdown of each module in my course. I will go over them quickly, real fast. Self-worth, giving your fears a name. What do you want? Yes. Identify and targeting your strengths, mental health management, emotional empathy, which we lack in the states. Yes. My goodness. Family sign up or sign off. You can still do this with or without their approval. Getting honest with yourself about what you need and what you want out of life. Commitment to change, making a commitment to yourself that you are worthy of that change. Things, things, and more things. We got a lot of people been living in that house for 25 years. They raised the babies there and they got all this stuff. And yeah. it is blocking them from proceeding. So how to deal with that. Yeah. Finalizing your decision and finally taking action. So those are the modules in the course. This is a living course. This is not you just reading. It, it requires you to be active. It's an interactive course with exercises. So to complete those, you know, issues, you'll go through an exercise. It could be anything from looking in the mirror and telling yourself you love you every day for the next 30 days to going to a physical meditation and affirmation exercise. Wow. So all of that's there. I'm also in the course with you. You hear my voice. I introduce the course to you and then I leave it to you to actually do the exercises. So they're very affordable. I also have have a consultation you can take. You can get the course and the consultation package. So go in and invest in yourself. And I'm just sharing the things with you that I did. You know, I yeah. took Cortez's course. I went and I talked to him. I didn't take his course. He helped me with the course. Um, but take his course. Take everybody. Alicia is providing just immeasurable information on the financials and how to get that. These are the things that will help to give you the tools. It's just like going in the war, but you got, you can't go out there butt naked. You yeah. got to put on your armor. You got to get your sword. You got to get whatever is right for you. So you'll be ready yes. to go in 
and fight whatever's in your way and knock it out the way so you can get to where you're going to your dreams. So yes. invest yes. in yourself. Yes. Fear will keep you in America. And that America mean, and they 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 uh profit from fear in America and they try to keep us always fear, fearful that America's the best, everything else is subpar, and, and it's just a lie. It's a it's lie. A and then one. and then your family's full of fear, so they don't want you to go, you know. So Imani, no, no, no Walmart or Costco over here. Um, yeah. No, uh, the only American stores that I've seen are just the stupid fast food stores. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're not allowed to put all that salt and stuff in the no. food here. So no. I've never tried it because I, there's no point in me getting a McDonald's hamburger when I can go to the mom and pop shop and get a burger, fries and a drink for three fifty. dollars exactly. all fresh. So right. I don't right. So I don't she even made go the to the patty like places. this. She did the patty. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Right. So I think we did it, y'all. We love you so much. We love you all back. So thank you. Right. Now that we've discussed oh, how yeah. you go from yeah. poverty to paradise, yeah. what do you need to do? You need to go over to Tia and Nikki's channel. Definitely. And you need to subscribe. Right. Yeah. And then if you're really interested in Mexico, also check out the interview that we did with Michelle Wedderburn, how to start a business in Mexico. She's in San Miguel de Allende. Check out Angela Lamar. They moved to Caretaro. Right. All these folks moved and none of them had the perfect circumstance. You know, mm -hmm. none of them had millions of dollars or even hundreds of thousands of dollars necessarily saved up to, to do this thing. We did. But, you know, we was moving farther and we were trying to do a lot of stuff. <laughs> and we've been on this financial independence thing for, for a minute now, for a minute now. So um, thank you, Jazzy Old Chick. Thank you for the super sticker. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all know we do have a scholarship fund. We will be rolling out the how to get your finances straight or beyond the bling next year. Beyond so bling. beyond, we got to get beyond the bling yeah, we and get, get our money yeah. straight. Absolutely. Right? And get our money today. Stop, stop. You know, write a, you can write a letter to the Joneses today and just tell them you're breaking up. You ain't trying to compete with them no more. Right. And we get beyond the bling. We get our money straight and then we get out of Dodge. All that. of that information to get on the wait list is in the description below. You can get on our email list. All of that is in the description below. How to get in touch with Nikki, how to do her courses and all that is in the description below. We got you hooked up, Nick. Tell mama we said thank you so much. Thank you so much for appearing. <laughs> and Jazzy Old Chick and all of the others who have given us super stickers know that that will go to help support someone else learn what we've learned. So thank y'all. Love I you. I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all. I Definitely. love you. Love you, Nikki. Stay, stay on for one second. We'll see all y'all next week. See you next peace, week. Peace, my peace. See y'all soon. <laughs> yes.